What popular rumor in your school turned out to be true? There was a family in my town that fostered who adopted all their kids. Everyone had known one of their daughters since she was quite young and then they adopted another girl her age when we were in 8th grade. They did not get along. When the original girl developed epilepsy a few years later, her new sister claimed she was faking and everyone thought she was so freaking mean and ostracized her. Eventually, she had to fess up to faking the seizures all along when she signed up for basic training, which she never even completed. Unfortunately this was after we all graduated, so we never got to apologize to her sister colon. You could still look her up on FB to apologize. Our science teacher was having an affair with our science technician and regularly left the class to have sex with her in the technician's room. That rumor started day one, then four years, two divorces and two very quick departures later it was confirmed and what was left behind was a technician's daughter in my ear whose life had fallen apart. Comma what was left behind was a technician's daughter in my ear whose life had fallen apart. That's just sad. That a 12 year old 6th grader had gotten pregnant over summer break. Our Los Angeles County suburb. It was a small and far separated from LA itself. See how large that county actually is on Google if you are unawares. Was so scandalized by this rumor that a newspaper article came out with a cartoon drawing of a pregnant girl in a pretty little girl dress and ribbon in her hair. Playing with dolls and kneeling next to her doll. House accompanied the story about the little girl who got pregnant and planned to keep the baby. She was interviewed. I remember her name but it's unnecessary. The whole dang town knew who it was. What's wild is that the kids in junior high actually had a baby shower for this 7th grader as she got close to full term. And all brought in packs of diapers and formula for her on a designated day. With the teachers, principal, and probably the school district in support of this. The year was 1984 to 1985. Hope the kid and the girl is living fine now. In high school, that the biology teacher was growing weed in the environmental lab. Supposedly he did it for 30 years without anyone noticing. No one could ever prove it though. Later on. I was assigned to be the agent taking care of some of his financial matters, so I went to his house to have him sign some paperwork. He had a hydroponic set up there, so I asked him about the environmental lab. It was like Han Solo in The Force Awakens. It's true. All of it. Then he offered me a brownie. There was a rumor that a teacher had sex with whole basketball team turns out it was half of the team. Worst part is her son was on the team. Her husband ended up divorcing her and her son left with his dad. That one of the students was actually a cop. Turns out he was a cop and busted one of the actual students for selling handguns in school. If you thought 21 Jump Street was unrealistic think again. Cop was a 33 year old male and undercover for like half the semester. That one of the seniors in my school wrote all over the men's room bathroom about bringing a bomb to school. But the bomb squad evacuated us all. Dogs came and they found one in a random locker. It was absolutely nuts. Kid got arrested two seats next to me in English class a couple of days later once they could prove he did it. A real bomb holy sht dang. In elementary, about 15 years ago, our favorite school teacher didn't come back after a summer break. He was awesome. Funny, sporty, cool, down to earth, never shouted, just a great role model to have around when you are a kid. Rumors went round that his wife and daughter died in a car accident. No one believed it. It was just what kids said on the playground. Somebody heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody. Then I went to the local grocery store with my mom a little while after school had started again. I saw my old teacher. He was a shell, a wreck. I was only 8 but even then you can tell when someone isn't there anymore. I asked parents of my friends, and they confirmed the rumors. I felt so bad that something as awful as that could happen to one of the best guys I ever knew and always looked up to. Turns out he committed suicide a couple of years ago. Same bridge that his wife and daughter died on all those years ago. I'd eat a gun if my wife and kids died. Living without them would be a torture that just wouldn't be worth enduring. There was always a rumor that the head janitor was a huge pothead and would smoke with students in one of the storage sheds away from the main building. I always figured it was bulls until my friend CJ sent me a pic of him and the janitor smoking weed while surrounded by folding chairs. 
Makes sense I worked as a custodian at a school, and my co-workers were either always drunk or high. They never smoked with the students yo. In my Catholic, Jesuit, high school, one of the priests and one of the nuns were very close friends. We all loved them, and we could see that they were quite fond of one another, and they made a really nice looking couple. We used to affectionately kid them about meeting in the tunnel between the convent and the rectory. A few years after my class graduated, they both left their orders, got married, and had kids. We're all happy for them. That's actually really sweet. We had a dean who retired one summer. Turns out, he was busted in a huge prostitution drug sting by cops. He had two prostitutes and C in his apartment when he got rolled up. Ended up pleading guilty to felony drug possession. A few others I can't remember. And sentenced to five years of probation. He was an advisor for the school's drug alcohol task force. Nice enough guy. Really cool with all of his students. Maybe too cool. Always seemed to have super red eyes. It's always the people who say don't that do. Here's a 2 for one First was that one of the kids in my grade way gay. Even back then, most people didn't care, so I didn't think anything of it. The second was that one of the kids hung himself on a swing set in a local park. They didn't say who it was, and just thought it was a vicious rumor about the same guy. Then four girls who were close to him came down the stairwell crying and ran out the front door and started heading in the direction of the park. It was confirmed around noon, we were sent home after lunch. Our freshman science teacher was a massive jerk to any girl, and would frequently throw the dress code book at girls for the slightest issue. Everyone said it was because he was p his daughter became a stripper. That ended up being true. Dang, that's rough. In middle school, we had a cool, social studies teacher. He loved the popular boys, especially the athletes, and not only ignored bullying in his classes of unpopular kids, he often took part in it. He also offered up his services for tutoring to these boys. Everyone always thought he was a child molester, except the popular boys who would threaten you if they heard you talk bad about him. When we came back to school at the beginning of 8th grade, he was gone, as was one of the more popular boys in school. He transferred to an insanely expensive private school. Turns out, sure enough, he was molested by the teacher several times during tutoring sessions at the teacher's house. The school district agreed to pay to send the kid to private school as part of a settlement. Oof that's gonna affect the kid hard hope the kid is okay. That this girl at my school who was maybe 16 was banging all the older kids who never left for college. Well she definitely was and everyone found out when she banged one of the cooler guys still in high school and there ended up being a herpes outbreak at my school. Nearly 40 people got herpes lol. Oof always wear protection. I had a science teacher that was rumored to get a boner whenever he started shouting. We thought it was a myth until we noticed it for real. He would always try put one leg up on a chair to hide it. Give me a moment. Uh, good to go. At our school this one kid was rumored to be a son of one of the local gym's amateur boxer teacher. None of us had no real reason to think twice about it. Once we got to high school this kid started teasing that kid. I had a couple of mutual friends with the bully so I warned the guy he might want to let up on teasing him. A couple days go by the dude didn't stop. And the boxer's kid proceeded to give this guy one of the worst one-sided fights I have ever seen. The bully learned his lesson and never bullied anyone else for the rest of our high school years. So it turned out to be true. In middle school, there was a rumor my 7th 8th grade social studies teacher owned a pet donkey. It turned out to be true. The donkey's name was Pedro the donkey. I am so glad there are some wholesome content after 99% comments of teachers students freaking. These took place in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Girl in my high school got into a very bad car accident and was in the hospital in a full body cast for a very long time. During that time her boyfriend somehow managed to get her pregnant and she later had an abortion. Years after high school I became friends with someone who was her best friend in high school. She told me that it wasn't the first time this boyfriend had gotten her pregnant or that she had had an abortion. Also there was some controversy over whether the hospital sex was consensual or not. Also her parents had to pay a lot of money for her to get therapy. Also in high school there was this kid I viewed as an arrogant punk. 
He always had a ton of money and was into photography. Apparently his father was a professional photographer. The rumor was that he was paying a lot of money to the hottest girls in our school to pose nude for him penthouse style. At the time I had seen playboys but no penthouses and didn't realize that the poses in penthouse were a little more explicit. I ran into him a couple of decades later and we went to a nearby bar to have some drinks. He seemed very humble at this point as if life hadn't grinded him down. He admitted to me that he had become an alcoholic. I told him about the rumor and he confirmed it, saying his father had put him up to it and that his father was the one who wanted the pictures and that was why his father gave him so much money. After his father died he inherited all his stuff and while going through some boxes he ran across the pictures. He destroyed them immediately not wanting get caught with them because they were of underage girls. I'll add this one even though it has not been confirmed and is probably somewhat true but not completely true as told. There were rumors that a girl who was a senior when I was a sophomore appeared in a P film while she was in high school. Again this was the late 70s probably 1978. And we were only about 20 miles from San Francisco, where a lot of those films were being made at the time. Also she would have been 18 at the time. There are a few guys I know who have spent the last 40 years trying to find this film. I think that with the internet and all the resources available IMDB, IAFD, Zhamster and so on. If this film existed with her in it someone from high school would have found it by now. I've heard from another that may know that all she did was agree to be an extra in a scene where she and a bunch of other extras went skinny dipping in a river for about $40 and that no one knows, including her, what happened to the film. My guess is that someone heard about this and decided to embellish the story. Also there was some controversy over whether the hospital sex was consensual or not. My first instinct would be that it wasn't consensual, given how extensive her injuries were, and that other kid's father was a complete monster. Paige was pregnant. None of us believed her. We were 13 and we were just about to start sex ed classes in a few weeks to learn about sex so we all thought she was making it up. Then she started to gain weight but she had always been kind of overweight and so no one really believed her than either. Then she brought sonogram pictures in because she was sick of people not believing her. Most people believed her after that. Then she got taken out of school and this was back when FB was super popular and everyone was talking about her baby a few months later she had posted all these pictures. Sorry I didn't believe you Paige. I looked her back up when I was 15. She had a second kid. A girl in my econ class lost her dad but a rumor started going around that he didn't die. He was arrested as a serial killer. Turned out to be true and was featured a few years ago on Evil Lives Hair Show. Two of the science teachers douche rooms together. Found out cause one of their sons was a student. Mayo they are just collaborating with their curriculums. The captain of the cheerleader squad got a breasts reduction to go from H cups to DD. Oh. And also, some relatively unknown girl did pee on her senior year spring break after she turned 18. And this was 25 years ago, so she had to like send letters and photos in the mail to set it up. The band director was grooming and seducing his favorite female percussionists. The new teacher was rumored to be a peophile. We found out it was true when he got arrested just a couple days into the second semester. Rumor was the junior high English teacher was a bit of a perv. Most of our parents would say hey, stop joking about that. Turned out he was. About 10 years ago he was arrested, charged and convicted on child P charges. Bit of a perv seems slightly understated. There were rumors that there was a network of underground tunnels that connected every building on my college campus. Didn't believe it till I walked through them myself. I know that's not about teachers fricking kids or incest or whatever but I still think it's interesting. There was a rumor going around in my high school that an English teacher and a biology teacher were sleeping with each other. I thought it didn't make any sense at all. Other than being strict teachers who graded harshly it's not like they had anything in common and I'd never even seen them talking to each other or interacting in any way. They were both married and besides, she was youngish and attractive and Lee was um, not. I had always figured that someone who managed to flunk both classes at the same time just decided to start a rumor. My brother is 6 years younger than me and during his time at the school they both were fired suddenly in the middle of the school year. Turns out it was true all along. They had been caught fraternizing on school grounds. I was pretty surprised. 
Of all the weird rumors that go around in a typical school, that was the one that had to be true. We had heard an underclassman. She was 15-ish, was sleeping with a local army guy, but nobody really believed it until the day our school got locked down BC her boyfriend showed up with a knife. The boyfriend, in his 30s, was intending to force her go get an abortion, but our principal was a badass who locked her in his office, then took the boyfriend down and held him in a headlock until the cops arrived. That's a very badass principal indeed. Biology teacher decided to use a scientific method to personally prove or disprove to himself that humans could photosynthesize. He did this by laying bare butt naked on his front lawn, landing him a public nudity charge. All in the name of science. My middle school math teacher, married man, was having an affair with one of the special education teachers. Went on for years. After I graduated high school, he killed himself when the other woman gave him an ultimatum. Confirmed by a family member that worked as a substitute teacher. Coincidentally, said family member also had an affair with another employee there that resulted in that employee shooting herself in front of my mother. What a roller coaster of events. This was a rama that went around my elementary school. Basically my school had a lockdown but they didn't tell us what it was for. One kid came in the next day and told us that his sister said it was a cow in the field in between the high school and middle school. So my second grade class went and told everyone else in the school. The next day we had an assembly that confirmed this rumor. Hahaha <laughs> this one's kinda of funny hopefully the cow got taken off the field safely. New physics teacher was a total creep. The old spidey sense kicked in for all of us. We could all tell something was wrong with the guy. Most of us dropped the class. Plus he sucked as a teacher and everyone was failing. Years later I stumble across a news article saying the teacher was fired and arrested for videotaping girls in the classroom through the use of camera hidden in the classroom. Mostly aimed at cleavage and upskirt short shots. We knew he was a weirdo. Time always tells the tale. We had something similar. Teacher that started my final year and taught kids a couple of years younger was weird and disliked. Rumors spread towards the end of the year he tried to kiss a year 9 girl. Everyone assumed it was a rumor. Then a year after I graduated the school's IT guy found P of 14 15 year old girls on his computer. My AP US Gov teacher was the daughter of Phil Jackson. We all believed it and during his last Lakers game her and her family was there and shown on screen. Got a screenshot of her at the game and shared with some friends. We all knew for sure then but we never really brought it up to be respectful as she didn't like the attention for it. The band teacher was having a long term affair with one of the students, we were in 8th grade. Her parents apparently knew about it all along and were fine with it, but one of the other band parents noticed inappropriate behavior when she was helping chaperone a Disney trip they were all on. It was big news lol. One summer, we came back to school and noticed that the very popular drumline instructor and one of the female drumline members, 16 years old, had both disappeared. Obviously, we jumped to the conclusion that there was an inappropriate relationship going on. Just a few years ago, I was sitting next to a band teacher at a bar, and I relayed this story. He confirmed that it was true. That this hot chick at my school was banging two army recruiters. Found out it was true when they were on the news being arrested. One of them ran to I think Michigan with his wife and kids. Imagine trying to explain to your wife that you need to uproot everything including your kids and flee to another state because you fricked a high schooler. When I was a sophomore in high school, the basketball coach became the new principal of the school. He had a girl who was on the girls basketball team worked in his office. Back then students were allowed to work as an office assistant if their grades were good and if they're seniors. She was there almost all the time even when she wasn't supposed to be. The rumor was that they were sleeping with each other, because people would see them doing things after school, like running together and go out to eat somewhere. These rumors were later blew off as nothing because even though he was the principal, he still devoted his time to an after school jogging running class to help students and teachers stay active and keep in shape and buying dinner at McDonald's for a student isn't the same as taking them somewhere more extravagant like steakhouse. After I came back as a junior from summer break, everyone in our class and in the entire school found out that they both got married and were expecting their first child together. He was married with children from a previous marriage that ended after the girl graduated from high school. 
It wasn't really a rumor, more of an open secret. One of our English teachers was in the IRA. One of our history teachers once showed us a documentary about the early years of the Troubles, mainly the civil rights movement. And sure enough, in the film, you can see our English teacher standing holding a rifle without even a mask on him. At that point it wasn't really a secret anymore. IRA membership was supposed to be secret, but if you were in it everyone knew about. The fact his membership was confirmed with that video always made me laugh. We had three at my high school, in no particular order. The drama theater teacher worked at a strip club at night. She did, but as a waitress bar back. That two particular kids would often bang in the orchestra pit of the auditorium. My sophomore year, the two kids were caught banging in there and got subsequently expelled. That a specific history teacher was a Vietnam vet and had severe PTSD just waiting to be set off. One day we watched the D-Day scene, Beaches of Normandy, from Saving Private Ryan while studying World War II. That day, class was 20 minutes of movie, and 35 minutes of him sobbing under his desk while everyone sat there awkwardly in silence. All his other classes for the rest of the day were cancelled and he took some vacation time for a month or so after that. Students of Reddit, what's your well that happened moment in the classroom? At my school we sometimes have drug dogs come and check the lockers. They always announce it like teachers. Please do not let students leave the classroom for the next bit of time everyone knows what it means and one kid in my class grabbed his bag and jumped over three desks and ran out the classroom. Turns out he was an entrepreneur of sorts. He was merely holding inventory for his small business. A physics class in community college. Professor was explaining conservation of angular momentum and had a kid sit on a tall chair that spins. He then had the kid hold two books out with extended arms and then spin as fast as he can before telling the kid to pull the books in close to his chest. Think of a figure skater and how they spin really fast. The kid immediately turns into a blur and the stool chair starts to tip slightly until it rockets from under him like it was shot from a slingshot. The kid slams into the floor as if he got choke slammed and his head hit the floor in a way that sounded like someone dropped an overly ripe melon. The look on the professor's face said, well that was a good run. I guess I have to find a new career now. Kid turned out okay and everyone got a laugh but it genuinely looked like I had just witnessed a death. The teacher probably thought I'm so getting sued. This wasn't my class but was the talk of the school for a while. A well-liked teacher gave her class a free work day and offered to play some music. Upon opening her iTunes, she found a file named Transformers MP4. Curious. She opened it. It turned out to be hard copy that blasted through the entire class at full volume. Panicking. She couldn't figure out how to shut it off so she ran the laptop. Open and still blasting at full volume down the hallway to the office to reduce exposure to students. It turns out, the superintendent's son used one of the shared servers to browse and download the video so it was accessible by every computer connected to the school network. The superintendent resigned a couple years later. At least it wasn't a Michael Bay movie. There was a guy who sat in the front row of one of my classes when I was in community college. He would just bring in fresh vegetable and just eat like squash and cauliflower raw during class. Not in classroom but kid fell out of the restroom ceiling and broke the whole ceiling. And in a classroom someone got thrown across the room into a wall. Hey Ron. Guy with anger issues started yelling at the teacher and then slapped her across the face. Keep in mind this fat kid was huge and the teacher was this old tiny Asian woman. The nicest guy in the class smokes a guy with a sucker right hand and just puts the guy out cold. I would pay to see that. When my teacher brought his samurai sword and started yelling random samurai cries whilst trying to teach us about ancient Japan. Quite the period we had that day. All I'm hearing in my head right now is Genji's ult. Had a teacher have a little bit of a mental meltdown in class when she realized that no one really cared about doing the homework and such. She was really sad, and I wish I was a better student for her, and I hope her life is going better nowadays. Two things you need to know. First, there was this guy at my school whom I've now known for 25 years. 
His thing is to scream fricky at everything. He's done it since I've known him. Anytime someone mentions Matt someone always adds a fricky he is huge and very loud. When he comes in the bar he announces his presence with an exuberant fricky if he calls you. You say hello and he yells fricky. You get the picture. Second, my senior year it was a thing to sneak vodka into school and Cinnabon mugs. For some inexplicable reason plastic Cinnabon mugs were like a huge thing. Sashaying around flaunting your Cinnabon mug. Rolls eyes. Anyway I'm in a post lunch class one day and one of the Cinnabon vodka girls up and starts puking bright. Hot pink. Fruity vomit out the window behind her. Then she stood up and screamed whoo frick yeah at the top of her lungs with her face covered in puke. Frick yeah dude is also in this class so he immediately screams frick yeah back. Then she yells frick yeah again and they go back and forth yelling frick yeah getting progressively louder with each one until the teacher gets to her and ushers her out of the room. The rest of us just sat there like WTF was that all about? Then she yells frick yeah again and they go back and forth yelling frick yeah getting progressively louder with each one until the teacher gets to her and ushers her out of the room. Rookie mistake. You accidentally created a positive feedback loop. Not a student anymore. But we had a supply English teacher that had the good old habit of liking a little drink in the classroom. He used to pull a small bottle of vodka out of the drawer and take a small sip every few minutes while trying to be sly about it. Well after a while one of the students told a teacher about it and then the supply teacher was found on his lunch break watching Netflix and drinking a glass of wine in the classroom. Funny thing is he stayed on as a teacher for Back in 8th grade middle school we had this really cool and chill US history teacher. He never raised his voice and he was pretty laid back about class and work. He taught in a storytelling kind of manner. And I don't ever remembering annotating any document in his class. Well, we had that one kid. In this story I'm gonna call him Jim. Jim was always late to class. And never turned stuff in. He was that one really cringy kid that everyone either hated or pitied. My teacher never got really fed up with him. But would always show his distaste for him in his facial expressions. My teacher normally would pull him aside to talk to him about his tardiness or missing assignments. But Jim would say he would be earlier do the assignments. But he of course never did. One day, Jim walks in late again. My teacher is about to start teaching. And when he turns and sees Jim walking in. Well, this time, my teacher wasn't so happy about it. It was the middle of the school year towards the end. And my teacher must have gotten so fed up with Jim at that point. My teacher yells Jim's name at the top of his lungs. He normally had a boomy voice, but when he yelled it amplified a hundred times over. The ground literally shook when he yelled, and I'm sure they could hear him from downstairs at the other end of the school. Our school wasn't that small either. For the rest of the class period, about 30 minutes, literally it was dead silent. Everyone was still kind of shocked from it. Go into the bathroom and open the door. The professor is there crapping. We make eye contact and I freeze. He slowly reaches for handle to close the door. So naturally I shake his hand because I'm retarded. Perfect recovery. When I fell asleep in the first row. And the professor and the other students started clapping to wake me up and when. I woke up I also started clapping like a moron. I took business English my senior year of high school. We had to do a presentation on a made up business. Two kids did a presentation on a frozen yogurt place that was like a make your own yogurt thing. You would squeeze the flavors and stuff out of fake cow udders. Straight from the teat was the name of their business. It was a long day. I'm interested in franchising. Someone asked him, can we cook it in chemistry? Another person asked our math teacher who was going home to Canada over break if she could go threaten to kill his friend who lives there. Same person told the same teacher that he couldn't do the work because he has 100 extra chromosomes. He doesn't. She responded by saying that explains why you look like that. This comment was a wild ride but that ending is gold. In a graduate level optics course, final exam. Professor leaves the room for a minute. Instantly the majority of Chinese students start conferring frantically in Chinese. Everyone's like, WTF. The Chinese kids at my university are renowned for cheating. 
9th grade for reference everyone was being super loud so we were pretty much unable to discern anything short of our own table. Just as the teacher is coming in and everyone is quieting down, this one kid is just loudly talking and telling this one girl who looks really freaking uncomfortable it's 4 inches with the most proud voice ever. Not in the classroom but it's still something that happened at school. At the last day of school, the entire high school goes into the theater for assembly. Then the entire grade presents the students that are leaving. And for every person that is leaving, a friend of theirs will walk up with a microphone and state why they will miss them, their achievements, etc. In our school year, this kid, let's call him John, was a complete butthole. He treated everyone badly and smoked in school, etc. Rumors have it that he was asked to leave at the end of the year and that he was pretty much expelled. But he was still presented by his friend in front of the whole high school. When his friend finished talking, he grabbed the microphone, pointed to our principal, and shouted in at him glad that I am leaving this school, as I'll never ever have to see your freaking face again then he gave the mic to his friend and left via backstage. Everyone was at this assembly, from grade 9 to grade 12. Every teacher, counselor, even the principal and the director of the school was there. There was a huge gasp and everyone was completely silent for the next 30 seconds. Then the next people which are leaving walked up to the stage. So, yep, that happened. I went to a small college and our classroom sizes were very small, 15-25 people, so we got to know everyone pretty well. There was this one guy who came in so stoned that he fell off his chair. Thankfully the prof was relatively chill so she let him go home. Not my story but my friend told me how on the first day of class, during introductions and icebreakers this girl got up and ran toward the door. She didn't make it and threw up all over the place, looked around her and completely horrified left the class. She came back for her stuff later. Also, another time, my professor knew I was turning 21 the night before and when I came in the next morning, completely hungover and dead. He and the whole class applauded me. It was nice. I have the same reaction to icebreakers. Tell us one fun fact about yourself. Blue. 11th grade AP bio class. One of my classmates was locally renowned for his nonsense. One day he decided he was gonna leave and so he walked to the back of the classroom and hopped out the first story window and left. In the middle of class. Same guy, same class brought his banjo in one day and had a banjo jam session before class started. We had one sub who was very popular because he could freaking rip on a harmonica. He always had one handy. I would love to see a harp off between him and John Popper. In the largest lecture hall on campus, there's a large reproduction of George Washington crossing the Delaware hanging above a door. One afternoon during my class in said room, some guy dressed entirely in red, white, and blue with an eagle mask walked in, saluted the painting and exited. Two girls in a fight. One of them German suplexed the other into a table. I know that sounds like wrestling but my teacher in 8th grade had an old wooden table next to her desk to hold extra books and stuff. Girls fought over a dude I think and after the slapping and hair pulling it happened. Was in a math class where a random student fell into the classroom and simply yelled you pushed me too hard shithead he got up and left as if nothing happened. The class laughed their asses off, including my math teacher. It's something I only see in cartoons. I remember being maybe in second grade and this one kid in our class kept yelling crap through the window at some 10th 11th grader that was outside. Our window was easy to climb in and out of as it wasn't placed at a higher level from the ground. The dude that was standing outside got annoyed with him, I guess, and just jumped on the window stool, which was pretty wide, and said something along the lines of you kid should not be saying things like this. I am older and won't do anything but someone in this life will at some point if you keep this behavior. Then went back to his friends or whatever like nothing out of the ordinary happened. Our whole class of second graders was shocked. I know it would have been more interesting if I remembered the details but it happened a long time ago. I thought you were about to tell me your 11 grader beat up a 2 CD grader. I was standing outside the classroom before class. Tim was a popular pothead who played a guitar. Gary was an upperclassman who'd been in some troubles before. Tim had hurt himself somehow and so he was on crutches. We're standing there. Gary comes walking by with a group of dudes and just yanks one of the crutches away from Tim. Oh, thanks, Tim says. 
Gary and the dudes walk off and the bell rang so I walked in and Tim hobbled on one crutch. The teacher saw, but I guess she thought Gary was supposed to take the crutch for some reason. Class was ending and Tim complained because he couldn't get to his next class unless he got his crutch back. The teacher apologized for her misunderstanding the situation and phoned the vice principal so that he could try to locate Gary in this crutch. This was not a hard job for the vice principal because Gary had gotten in trouble with him earlier in the day. So he'd stolen the crutch from Tim and promptly burst into the vice principal's office and threatened him with it. Story from the dude standing outside the office was that Gary was swinging crutch around. He knocked over a trash can and was pounding on the desk with the crutch. The vice principal stood across the desk from him with his arms in the air. He kept saying, think about what you're doing Gary, you don't want to be doing this now. I guess that by the time the teacher called, Gary had been de-escalated and disarmed and it was all over, except for figuring out where the crutch had come from. It would have been great if she could have warned him ahead of time. Fat kid comes into science class in the morning not looking too good. Substitute teacher doesn't care even when we tell her that he is literally going blue. Eventually he throws up on the floor and the teacher goes to him to help. He covers his mouth with his coat so he doesn't throw up on her. He throws up and his vomit goes down his jacket sleeve and gets dumped on her shoes. Substitute teacher walks out of schools with a trail of vomit footprints and says nothing. Freshman year of college, I had one professor who would randomly call on students in class, and if they didn't answer correctly, he would proceed to give them a roast in front of the whole class for their lack of knowledge on the subject material. I was in the class with a few of my good friends, as it was a prerequisite that we all needed to have. Even though we got our fair share of roasting from him as well, we all thought it was funny, and knew it was his way of making sure the students are engaged in the lecture. About halfway through the semester, he called on one person, and after she incorrectly answered, he started to casually roast this student. At this point, another girl raised her hand to get the prof's attention. After he called on her, she proceeded to vocally berate him about how he was treating us all like children as well as call him every vulgar word she could think of. At this point, he's shouting back at her too, complete with all the same vulgarities that she used on him, and me and my friends are just sitting in the back, laughing under our breath while simultaneously being completely dumbfounded that this kind of stuff actually happens in college. Finally, he yells at her to leave lecture, she obliges, and as soon as she is out of the room, he proceeds to roast her even more to the class. It was so odd to see something like this, especially since I had just come from high school a few months before. Man, college is wild. I was sitting in my physics class, trying to stay awake because that class is one of the first classes of the day and I didn't get much sleep the night before. I sit at a table in the back of the class by myself. The table to my left has two of my friends and one other student sitting at it. I forget exactly what was being taught that day but I remember my friends suddenly saying things like oh my god, are you alright and maybe you should go to the nurse. I looked over to see my friends grabbing tissues and giving them to the other student whose nose was bleeding, which wouldn't be such a problem if there wasn't so much blood pouring out from this guy's nose. It was concerning to say the least. Our teacher told him to go and see the nurse. He nodded, stood up, and then he lied out of the room. It was probably the weirdest thing I have seen in a while. When I was a sophomore in HS, there was this one day in my French class where we were going over the homework from the day before. The homework that comes from the book is divided into different sections by letter. So section A, section B and so forth. At one point going over the assignment, no one was paying any attention to the teacher and we were just talking to the people around us. She wanted someone to read their answers from the next section and no one was listening to her. She was getting frustrated at this point. So she raised her voice and said I want the D. There was two seconds of silence followed by everyone busting out laughing. One of those moments that I'll never forget. I walked into school after being gone for a day and I saw the front desk broken perfectly in two. Apparently the biggest kid in my grade, a kid named Fisher, had sat on the desk and broken it. C classic Fisher. Had a professor get served divorce papers in the middle of a lecture. Luckily there was only 20 of us in the classroom and not hundreds in a lecture hall. Freshman year I made the horrible mistake of taking Psych 101 at 8am. So of course hungover made it to class, 
sat down, opened my notebook and promptly fell asleep, woke to the professor asking me a question. I answered it accurately. I had taken a similar class in high school. He glared at me and moved on. Then I looked down at my notebook to find page after page of little notes and cartoons from the whole class. Mostly themes on you snore loudly and you look like an idiot with your mouth hanging open. The shame was strong with me that day. I once decided to take a history class at 7am one semester. Never made that mistake again. To make it worse, our professor had a monotone speaking voice. Probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life right here. It was 7th grade English class and my crush and the first girl I ever made out with was in the class. I don't remember if we kissed before or after this happened. Maybe after? Anyway, I let one rip. Silent but deadly literally by definition. It smelled so bad that the kids around me started freaking out and obviously my whole body is turning red. It caused such a distraction in the class from people laughing that the teacher made me go in the hall while the stench dissipated. After 5 minutes I was allowed back in and had to perform the walk of shame past my crush back to my desk that was drowning in February's. Ex student here. This was long ago. We sent whispers around the classroom to all drop our books on the ground, pretending it was by accident. When the clock on the wall hit an exact time, when it happened our teacher was in the middle of writing on the chalkboard and she turned around, shocked, to find us all picking up our books. She cried after that, and we all started to feel really bad. Learned later she had just had a miscarriage. Sorry teach, we didn't know, and we all liked you. In first grade, this kid climbed on top of a bookshelf and screamed the Superman Femme song, before declaring he was Superman. The then proceeds to jump off the bookshelf and collides with another kid. We were all doing some like test thing then a student got up ripped it up screamed frick this then threw a chair at a teacher, proceeded to them say the teacher bullied her for the whole year. Not really a classroom but one day after pay me and my friends were changing out into our regular clothes when suddenly we hear a commotion in the restroom. Our section of lockers had an almost direct view into the restroom so we make our way over there to see two of the six sinks and they were ripped out of the walls by this one football player. This happened in a February and for the longest time until I graduated. I was a junior at the time. The sinks were still ripped out of the wall. One of the janitors must have gotten lazy because the next time we went into the locker room the sink was haphazardly put back into the wall only to be ripped out again. The guy who did this has major issues as another friend said he played gore videos on a classroom projector everyone has a school issued laptop. And I saw him chase the freshman around the team locker room like a spider monkey. Naked. I don't blame the janitorial I had the entire student body treating everything like shot and was responsible for repair and cleaning I wouldn't try. If you want to trash the nice things you deserve to get only trash to use. I wasn't involved, but a couple of weeks ago the frickin head boy of my secondary school legitimately swallowed a key. Apparently, he had placed it in his mouth to prove something and it had slipped down his throat. He had to go down to the medical room to get laxatives and get gloves so he could fish the key out of his poop. By the time he got it clean, the bloody thing had rusted black from stomach acid. What happened to the cool kids from your school after they graduated? Coolest kid in my school was one of those charismatic prodigies. He got full ride scholarships, he partied with the jocks, played magic with the nerds, talked to me about building computers and always kicked my butt at Counter Strike. And he played 4 instruments before he was 15. I think he got a degree in chemical engineering. Then went back for 1 year to get a music theory degree too. Then after 5 years of working he decided that he wanted to be a doctor so he went back to med school and eventually started his own practice. Freaking dude had cheat codes on. One of those people you just kind of wish would go into politics. These are who cool kids should be. I think most of them have done very well. One of them, the best looking, most athletic boy in my school died from ALS several years ago. That really rocked me for some reason. I didn't even really know the guy. He was cool, but he seemed like a decent person. Death is always the scariest when it happens to someone you would never consider dying. One went to jail for drug possession with intent to sell. One dropped out of college and works at a mall kiosk. And other quit his cushy corporate job and started a non-profit that provides shelter, food and job resources to homeless single mothers and their children. 
Most of them got into Ivy League schools top private schools and then landed six figure jobs after graduation in big cities. Jeez. Popular girl in middle school. She used to bully me since I was the shy quiet kid with no friends. In high school life got better for me and I wasn't bullied anymore. And I didn't see much of her. She got into drugs but remained the pretty popular girl with lots of friends. A few months after we graduated, she murdered someone. Another kid our age, in a botched robbery with two of her friends. Rotten prison Katie. RIP on a whole other level. One is dead. One is doing life in the federal pen for running a rim ring. The rest are just living the standard issue small town life. Well, the captain of the cheerleading squad left after graduation, but only long enough to go to university and get a teaching degree. She came back to the school as a teacher, became the faculty advisor for the cheerleading squad and recently retired. So, she stayed in high school for 30 years. This is why it's okay to peak after high school. Emotionally stunted addicts with numerous kids and no way or desire to support them. I think two of them actually moved off to college, didn't go crazy, graduated, got married, and are leading productive lives. Some of them became well adjusted adults with successful careers and are very happy in life. Others though became total train wrecks. The group of girls I used to hang out with that were considered edgy and cool ended up being complete shitshows with serious alcohol and addiction problems. A lot of them suffer from crippling mental health issues as well. It's really sad actually BC they had so much promise and potential. I hope they get the help they need. For most, I genuinely don't know. For one boy, he had dreams of moving down south to get away from the cold winters, as well as experience life in a bigger city. A big aspiration was also to break into the music industry. A very polite, happy, charismatic boy that everyone liked. He did make it down south, had some steady work, and even was playing music here and there. You know how sometimes you get certain feelings about someone, but you don't know why. What little things they say and do just cause you to get a particular aura from them. I always got a feeling that he was carrying a lot of sadness internally. I remember him getting a little defensive about smoking marijuana stating that he liked the way it made him feel. This feeling of joy led him down a destructive path of drug experimentation in order to find greater joy. He overdosed and died this past weekend. 90% of them are dead by drug overdose. I wasn't close to being a cool kid in school. I always say that if they were to do a reunion it would have to be at the cemetery. Sad but true. Yeah the opioid epidemic hit hard. They all got fake tea. Married old bald guys for a few years. Popped out a kid or two then took off with half his money. Now they drink way too much wine. Post about how being a stay at home mom is the hardest job ever and have leather skin and try to sell me makeup on FB. As far as I can tell, most of them went off to college, married each other, and moved back to our stereotypical new money southern wasp suburb. The guys sell real estate, sell insurance or sell cars. The girls are mainly nurses, interior designers, or also in real estate. They all look the same and they all still hang out together. You just described the entire suburban area of Saint. Louis. Basically, I don't really know about most of them. The one girl who was like the queen bee in my class ended up getting pregnant at 20 by her longtime boyfriend, returning home while she had the baby, and then finished school locally. I think she married the boyfriend and they're still married. I should look that up. Her son should be in his mid-twenties now. I remember finding out about this when I was preparing for a semester abroad, and how different our lives immediately became. Another kid from a few years before me owns a bar and dabbles in music. Seems pretty happy. A girl from that same class, who was going to go out and conquer Broadway, ended up on a soap for a few years, then did audiobook narrations, ended up in Las Vegas. She's now divorced and from the little bit I've seen on Facebook, is not aging well. Met quite a fool. Because, whoa, she was untouchable in high school. A couple of the popular girls came out as lesbians. Looking back, um, how did we not know? A few other people, I went to my 25th last year, seemed to be normal suburban moms and dads, working, taking care of the house, etc, etc. 
Saw a couple of them on Impschmacht a couple years ago. Saw one who I was actually good friends with in middle school on campus and said hi. She completely ignored me. Just like she had ignored my message offering to hang out when she transferred to my college. Saw another one and she literally asked me what time it was but didn't recognize me. Consider it a blessings. You wouldn't want friends like that anyway. Half of them ended up pretty good or okay I'd say. The other half are either unemployed or work at the gas station or supermarket. Which is totally fine but I feel they could have done more. Comma which is totally fine but I feel they could have done more. I mean most people can do more if they care to. It's still honest work and whatnot. But few people's career has to end behind a register or stocking shelves. They stayed in our same boring town. In the same relationships. Had babies at 18 or 19. Joined MLMs and are now flooding my social media inboxes with messages that start out with. Hey girl. It has been too long. And end with. Would you like to host a party by my crap? OMG I have been getting a lot of those messages. So sad. Half of them sell crack. The other are SoundCloud rappers who smoke in mall stairwells. You figure out real soon being cool in high school doesn't mean much. I'm a SoundCloud artist working on a master's degree AMA. Jamie had a chance. Well she really did. Instead she dropped out and had a couple of kids. Mark still lives at home cause he's got no job. He just plays guitar and smokes a lot of pot. Jay committed suicide. Brandon OD'd and died. What the heck is going on? The cruelest dream. Reality. They got everything. The homecoming queen never went to college. Went to the right bars instead. Married rich and has a house that could be on a soap opera with a ton of land. She doesn't work. And they say God is fair. They're all addicts from what I've heard. I guess that's what happens when you start doing drugs at 14. It's unfortunate. They could have done so much, you know? Well, there were the actually cool cool kids who are now happy, successful people, with fulfilling lives, and then there were the not really cool cool kids who are in MLMs, engaged to convicted child molesters, or in prison for killing one of their kids while driving super high and drunk with three other small children in the car. The actually cool cool kids were kind to everyone, and everyone liked them because of it. The not actually cool cool kids took the stereotype to heart and lived it out, unfortunately. Our valedictorian was in all the sports. She got married to another girl. Beyond that most seem to have gotten very boring jobs. Big G. Prom King died of an overdose at 30. Homecoming Queen ran over a little kid in her car a year after graduation. She went to jail for a year or two. Most of the other cool kids went to college, got normal jobs, and had pretty decent lives, or so it seems. Good looking spouses. Nice homes. Nice cars, a couple kids, etc. They all joined the army together. One is a paratrooper. The others are either armored corps or air force. One of them was in the medics course with me. They're all fairly happy and much nicer than I had remembered. They still meet up every now and then. One was in Forbes a few years ago due to her online pet store company being successful. One's an actor and was in a couple movies. One was in P for a little while. Not sure about the rest. I'm in my 50s, so some of the cool kids, along with the regular kids, have died of one thing or another. The ones who had wealthy parents are, as far as I know, still wealthy, either from learning the family business or through inheritance, or a combination of the two. Some of the women are still quite good looking, while some are not. Most of the guys are fat and or bald. Although one guy moved out west where the sun shines and started a business that involves a lot of physical labor. He hasn't gotten fat or bald, but his skin is more sun damaged than average. As far as careers are concerned, I would say all of them have fared better than me, but that's a pretty low bar to hop over. In high school, our cool kids are actually smart and talented. Most of them are in med school and law school, and some of them are now successful in their respective fields. Brandon took my gaming laptop since he doesn't have a job, and his dad kicked him out. Jessica got pregnant like not even 6 months after graduating, and is no longer going on that awesome anime trip to Japan she always kept talking about. Paul was doing fine for a year, but then he got charged with grabbing an underage girl's boob with her dad watching, 
and he got out like 3 months ago. Nate is still an upper MI, and works at a brewery that I know of so far. I still have yet to take him up on that hangout sesh. Bethany did show up at my town one time since her brother was now clinically insane. I still had a crush on her though. She stayed the night at my place, and I dropped her back home the next day. She did talk to me after that. About a year goes by, and she is looking paste white, and got fat, and has a kid as well. Brianna hasn't changed at all. She's still into her drawings, and I check out her deviantard page from time to time. Her sister went to a different country Europe or something idk, and is doing good. Freaking loudmouth rowdy Kyle got put in the slammer, because he punched a guy too hard at a party, and the guy fell off a wooden porch, and died. Steven just walked off the face of the earth. Not a single blip of info. Last info I got was a post he made on FB back in like 2012 talking about a football match. Jordan followed his scholarship through just like his dad wanted him to. I wanted him to stay in town, but who am I stop him from obtaining his dreams I just wish he would visit so I could have a use for my second player controller. They look back at their glory days and wonder where it all went. 12 years of constant adulation from their peers. Parents and teachers all came to a screeching halt one evening in June. And just like that, it was over. Don't let this distract you from the fact that in 1966, Al Bundy scored 4 touchdowns in a single game while playing for the Polk High School. Marky got with Sharon and Sharon got Sharice. She was sharing Sharon's outlook on the topic of disease. Mikey had a facial scar and Bobby was a rapist. They were all in love with dying. They were doing it in Texas. Some will die in hot pursuit in fiery auto crashes. Some will die in hot pursuit while sifting through my ashes. Some will fall in love with life and drink it like a fountain that was pouring like an avalanche coming down the mountain. Jake and Ashley were married that spring. She immediately realized it was a mistake and began a decades long affair. Finally divorcing Jake and claiming sole custody of their child. Jake never saw his son again. The Rexter finally found the courage to tell his parents he was gay. They hung up the phone and haven't spoken to him since. Bookworm Beth went to Harvard and met the man of her dreams. He gave her HPV and borrowed $1400 he has yet to pay back. Buck finally got his act together. Unfortunately a truck accident would claim both arms and his wiener. He eats through a tube and pees through a different tube. After graduation Emily was never seen again. If you have any information as to the whereabouts of this man please contact the police. And of course Mrs. Henderson. She died alone. These were my best friends. I really miss them. It's too bad I drowned in a pool when I was 8. What? What the frick? A few are anti-vax moms. Which is honestly the worst. Where we live it's easy to fall into drugs so a lot of the popular kids went that way. Lastly, our top athlete, who was super smart, dropped out of UC Davis to have a walk with Guy. Haven't heard anything from him since. Some went off to university, some community college, some would later drop out and start getting into hoodlum stuff I would up seeing via the local news, military, or just started working at the shipyard in our area I suppose. This is the general gist of what happens to people from my home city. Knocked up her sophomore year of college, while working at Hooters. Dropped out, had another kid, no idea what happened long term. She was a straight A student in high school, going to her private university because her parents had money. It's crazy how she wasted those opportunities. His dream of joining the Air Force and becoming a badass fighter pilot was dashed when he failed the physical. After that, don't know. Dang, could have been the next top gun. What a shame. One girl works in a strip club now. One of the cliques still have their bonfire parties. Some of them are in decent colleges but with easy majors. One is a bartender. One high school is married now the girl was a talented girl she ended up having a baby and the guy well who knows what he does for money. He was always smoking weed. The girl is always trying to be a YouTube vlog mom. And another mom was an attractive girl but had a baby and is trying to be a viral mom on social media. Many of the athletes who thought were big shots go to local uni but nothing impressive. And others lost scholarships due to sexual activities with underage girls. They always had their thinking with the wrong head. The remainder are still in school pursuing their degree like me. Various stages of drug addiction mostly. Addicts. Rehab. 
or posting cliche stuff on social media about living that blessed life typical people that peaked in high school. <laughs> Every single cool kid just parties all night and works minimum wage jobs in retail or some crap. Some of my friends were friends with them so I get the occasional update, living with their parents and all such. Two of them got felonies, one for vehicular manslaughter and is doing time, another for felony trespass and criminal mischief, another one has two DUIs under her belt, you could say they really made the most of their dreams to be successful. Valedictorian went to school to become an elementary school teacher, this past year was her first one teaching, from what I heard, she doesn't want to go back kid I knew in middle school is becoming really famous for doing stunts like drinking stupid amounts of alcohol, if you ever hear of Steve you will do it that's him. Of the ones who did graduate, one committed criminal damage to property, knocked up some woman 10 years as senior, and then started going bald, the other has been arrested 5 times for DWI, and convicted of at least 2, and probably a third, in this state, the fourth is a felony. He was actually on trial for two separate buoys at once. He also hasn't held a valid driver's license in nearly a decade. At my school, all of the popular kids were well-rounded individuals. The ones I still see on Facebook seem to be doing well. In my experience, the bitchy and mean popular kids were in middle school and they were not popular in high school. I don't know what happened to them. I bumped into one like 5 years back. Still super beautiful. Still really nice. She seemed to be doing very well from our short chat. Most of them are married, have good jobs and led successful lives. I was a loser back then, still now. My only upside is that I'm not a negative influence on society. I can pay my bills. Barely. Don't accept freebies and that's about it. What did the bully do at your school that made you think that's too far? Belted some kid with a chunk of wood. 2x4. For talking to his girl. Kid got a depressed skull fracture or some crap. Bully went to jail. Poor plank. This is not what Johnny 2x4 created him for. I went to a boarding school. Some kid got pinned down by two guys while another bounced his balls on his face. This kid got at Mr. Ball bouncy by pee into a water bottle and pouring it all over his room. Both were kicked out. I would have took a big bite out of the guys dangling twins. 5th grade. She mercilessly bullied the shortest, smallest kid in class every day. She called him midget, and other things like that. I distinctly remember the day she shoved him to the ground outside of school. That was when I knew I had to stay away from her no matter what. About 5ish years later, her and her boyfriend were involved in the murder of her mom and sister. They found her trying to run away to Mexico. Completely horrifying and heartbreaking situation. Do you know what happened to the small guy? I really hope things got better in life for him. Literally smeared crap on this one autistic kid, who bit the tip of his finger off after. Had it coming. Stole the wheelchair of a disabled girl, now thing was, everyone liked this girl, so there was a cry for blood, they expelled him after threats were made against the administrators. Who the actual frick does this? It was more like, my entire 8th grade class, I guess one girl sent a nude to a guy who pretended to be interested, and then he shared it all around the school. Instead of acting horrified, everyone was like, yo, have you seen, redacted, s nudes they even asked right over her, like, I was walking to class behind her and two people on either side of her, who were talking to each other about the recent drama. Needless to say, John Mulaney really had a point when he said 13 year olds are the meanest people on earth. This happened in my high school as well. People blamed the girl, because the guy was sort of with another girl and the girl that sent the nudes was obviously a W that deserved it. it makes me sick remembering that mindset. My god. It doesn't exactly fit with the story but this thread made me remember a funny incident where one of my friends at the time suddenly decided he was going to become a hardest and get all the respect and babes by picking on the weird kid. It was totally random because he was a nice, pretty quiet kid before that. But anyway he walked up to the weird kid all billy badass and said that's my chair. What are you doing in my chair before class? The weird kid just calmly sits there and quite rightly points out there's no assigned seating. So Billy Badass suddenly pushes him and tried to get him in a headlock. So the weird kid just bit him on the arm. 
really hard, hard enough to break the skin and send him to the hospital for tetanus shots. This was back in the days when school administrators still were allowed to have some common sense so the principal just called them both into the office, figured out what happened, and said to Billy Badass you got what you deserved, and said to the weird kid, don't bite anyone else, that is dangerous and very weird, and then made them shake on it and that was that. The first and last day of my old junior high friend's decision to be a badass and get popular by picking on the weird kid. Said to the weird kid, don't bite anyone else, that is dangerous and very weird. This made me chuckle a little bit, not that I disagree in any way, I just think it's a bit funny that he specifically said very weird. Circa 2003 high school, saw a bully practically tear the nipple off this one kid. It was like an F5 tornado titty twister with fingernails. Had the kid with a learning disability read out me so fucking we Todd did. Substitute teacher was in the room and did nothing. So I stood up to erase it off the board and got in trouble for being out of my seat. A group of kids liked to pee on this real nice teacher because they said he was creepy so one day they played a prank where one of them pretended to hang themselves and he had a stroke because of it I like annoying teachers and all but even I was. Like holy crap. My mother in law was one of five rowdy kids who grew up in Ethiopia with little supervision. Family law has it they had somehow snuck out to a public hanging and then were inspired to rig it up so when the parents came home it looked like one of the daughters had hanged herself. I clearly have only known these siblings as adults but I fully believe they would do this. One bully at my school pushed a kid down the stairs, where there were shards of glass at the bottom, which he landed on. The bully was expelled, in anger management, probation, and juvie for a short time. The kid's okay. He has serious scars though. This one may be kind of mild compared to others. But there was a freshman on our wrestling team who was a completely dweeb and got picked on a lot by this group of sophomore wrestlers. Our 113, 120 and 138 wrestlers. Anyways one day they decided it would be a good idea to pee on him in the showers after practice. That made me so mad. I talked to the coach next day and got to drill live matches, actually wrestling each other, with each of them on rotation for 10 practices straight. Maybe the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Kid they picked on qualified for state is senior year. Calm as a bee. Did you hit a flying squirrel? I wasn't told much of it but someone I was friendly with was bullied pretty harshly by some people and committed suicide. He never told anyone about how he was bullied but people slowly caught on to who caused it to happen. Still feel terrible that I didn't know what was going on with the person I was friendly with and wish I could have done something to save him. Some guy tried to light a girl's hair on fire. He didn't succeed but she was ready to beat the crap out of him. I held her back. At this point I'm not sure that was the right choice. It's hard to say, I don't know where he is now, but he probably could have used a beating. My friend had finally grown her hair back after chemo. So yeah that guy was a giant dong, and maybe I should have let her kick his butt. I thought he was good dude before that event. But yup, way too far. Normally I would say violence isn't the answer but in this case, yeah maybe some violence would be okay. Some girl liked to start fights to increase her ego and status so she picked on this one girl who was raped by her father for a large portion of her young childhood. She started saying I bet you liked it and practically told the entire school and all this other nasty crap. Eventually the other girl got incredibly depressed and angry and pushed her. They fought and the bully had a posse of equally rude guys teasing and filming it saying dumb w stupid butt s. The bully smashed her nose in and ripped out earrings. Stupid fights happen in middle school. But this was rly fricked up and too far. Also nothing happened to the bully or any of the kids involved. Luckily the victim was emotionally strong. But holy crap I can't believe people like that exist. Really sucks. Not really the bully of my school, but when I was in HS, a girl posted her boyfriend's pee on Twitter and tagged his mom because she was mad that he made it, rightfully, he did it behind her back. The added salt in the wound was that he did two solo vids that got posted on the site's gay version, and she chose the video from the gay site to tag the mom in. Needless to say, his family and anyone who knew him saw his everything after he was publicly exposed and de-anonymized. 
This guy was also very homophobic in his personal life, so he got kicked out of the pee industry after his personal Twitter was posted on the comments for all of his videos causing a huge uproar. His apology video is still on YouTube, and he still gets crap for it. Tried to beat the crap out of the nicest guy in school. Nice guy was huge, not fat, but big ahead of the rest of us. But he wouldn't fight back. Just kept getting hit on the way to his next class. He turned around once, and we thought it was on. But then he calmed himself down, turned the other cheek and walked to class. I was amazed. So much class. Two of my buddies and myself beat the crap out of the bully the next day. Told him never to frick with big guy again. He never did. I wish I had the ability to turn the other cheek like that back then. Had to learn the hard way much later in life. I was amazed. So much class. Two of my buddies and myself beat the crap out of the bully the next day. Well then. Not really an aggressive bully, but one of the popular kids. There was an outcast kid in high school who committed suicide. He had a lot of issues. One of which was he was in the foster system and living in a group home. At school. Was ignored mocked probably bullied. I only had one class with him. So didn't know much. By the popular crowd. After he died. My English teacher was making an announcement that she would arrange to take anyone to the funeral who wanted to go. Group of popular kids in front of me start asking each other if they are going to go. Because now they care about the kid. One of the guys says I don't know. I might go just to get out of class. To be fair. Everyone went silent and kinda gave him looks. And he did seem ashamed at what he said. I think he tried to mumble something about joking or not meaning it. But seriously. It stuck with me. Like. When he was alive. At the least you purposely ignored this kid's existence. At most bullied him. Now he's offed himself. And you want to use his funeral not to make any sort of amends. But to simply get out of class. Freaking piece of crap douche. Wanted to strangle him with his freaking puka shell necklace. I was severely bullied in grade school. I was basically tormented and tortured for 8 years. When I was about 5 they locked me in the bathroom and turned out the lights that were outside the bathroom, and told me this ghost lady was going to come out of the mirror and kill me. Another time when the teacher left the room, this kid grabbed my glasses from my face and started tossing them around to all the other kids. They eventually broke, and I don't know why but I told my dad I lost them and he was very angry with me. We were all so poor so needless to say I was blind for a few weeks until we could afford to get new ones. I have a bunch more stories that crossed the line but I will leave you with those for now. That's terrible. I'm sorry you had to go through with that and I hope you're in a much better place now. There was a toilet in the locker room that quit working. Someone used it anyways and it sat for a couple weeks. Kid filled someone's water bottle with it. Disgustingest thing ever. What did the kid do after he drank it? In about second grade, I went to Catholic school, and around every Thursday, we went to church. We also had to kind of prepare for our first Holy Communion outside of school. At some point near the end of our preparation thing, we did a mock of the FHC, and me being a second grader and an idiot, I thought that was our FHC. Fast forward a few weeks later, and it was Thursday church day, and what do I do? I do communion, and I eat the bread. Everyone else seemed to know that the mock FHC wasn't the real deal. So when I did it, everyone, including the teachers, was just sort of like, What the heck dude? Why did you do that? I just sort of blew it off as them seeing it as a common mistake. The next day, I had to go to my religion class, where my teacher, the bully, completely freaked out on me. She insulted me, called me dumb, threatened to send me to the principal's office, repeatedly asked me why I took the bread, despite telling her the truth that it was an accident, started going on about how I was going to heck, and she got the whole class to get in on the fun as well. The whole class period just sort of went about with me being verbally abused by everyone in the class. Keep in mind that I was, like, 7, and I was just sort of speechless and severely embarrassed. That one experience still has me scarred to this day, and I still have social anxiety from it. Mrs. Minor, if you're out there, and reading this, go frick yourself. They tied some kid's gym locker up with his t-shirt, but before they did they they squirted mustard all over his clothes. I helped him get his locker back open. They weren't happy but I was a varsity wrestler so they didn't mess with me. 
Thanks for sticking up to the bullies. Anger issued Kado thought ITD be funny to throw some kid down 5 stairs into a wall. Turns out it was just plain drywall and blew a hole in the dang thing. I walked into the staircase right as the kid flew into the wall and booted to the main office. I was not about to get caught up in that shit chow. He beat a teacher until she was unconscious when she called him out on his bulls. He got expelled for it and so for a while there was no lead bully in my grade. Eventually one of his friends rose up to take his mantle and continued the age old bully traditions but thankful never to the extent of beating anyone unconscious. Pulled a chair a chair from under a girl when she went to sit down. Broke her tailbone and she was off for a few weeks. I used to do that to my friends sometimes but I never accidentally broke their tailbones lol. While I was in junior high, there was this guy in my grade, he was incredibly nice, super sweet to everyone, and never realized when people were making fun of him. His name was Brian and he had Down syndrome. One day these three kids decided to start picking on him. They started making fun of him. Brian never really realized when someone was being sarcastic or making fun of him. So he would just smile and try to talk to them and be the nice guy he was. These three kids decided to take it further and started pushing him. I told them they needed to frick off. Their reaction was to push him to the ground and hold him there until he was crying and telling me to do something about it. Now I've always been a bigger guy. I was probably 6 feet 0 inches and 200 pounds back in 7th grade. I also grew up as the youngest of 5 boys. Meaning I got the crap kicked out of me by my brothers on a daily basis. So I had some good knowledge on how to protect myself. Bit outside of with my brothers. Had never had a fight before. I ended up breaking one of the kids nose. One ended up with broken ribs. And the third just got a bloody lip. I still say they deserve to get beat much worse. After it was all said and done. The three of them were suspended for three days. I was suspended for three as well. But after my mom heard what happened and why I was fighting. I got a three day vacation from school and a new game for my GameCube. My mom always taught me right from wrong and was nothing but proud of me. <laughs> happened off of school grounds but two bullies. Girls. From my school were walking in their neighborhood and saw another girl from school in front of her house. They demanded she give them her jacket and when she refused one held her while the other one set the girl's hair on fire. Luckily she saved herself from serious damage. Maybe she stopped, dropped and rolled. I don't know. Bullies got expelled. Before that they'd served multiple suspensions for other incidents. He shoved a black kid's head into a toilet filled with crap. Pee a ton of people off. Racism charges were filed but nothing ever came out of it. He was too popular and parents were too well known. It was fricked up. Same guy had a signature move of popping people's right eyes out after knocking them out. He eventually wrecked his truck doing 90 miles per hour on a little crappy bus back road while drunk and fricked up on coke. Caused his truck to flip several times and died from it. Not going to be the one who says he kinda had it coming but. Beat up a mentally challenged kid. Because he came in our school. The kid was from a different school. He came after classes were out to hang out with his sister. The frick is wrong with people. This made me so mad does it kill for people to acting fricking civilized and treat others with kindness and compassion. Sorry English isn't my first language. This guy in my HS wasn't even a bully he was just an ignorant douche. He threw a used condom at the openly gay guy. And he took a video of it to colon. He wasn't a bully, he was just a psychopath. His father would pay people to spend time with him, but literally no one in my town ever would. He hit my friend Pete over the head with a shovel and tied him up and threw carpenter nails at him. One time, he took a stick and a belt and beat the crap out of himself, leaving bruises and welts all over his body. He told his parents me and my friend did it to him and they called the cops. I had to explain to my mother that this kid was known for being a complete psychopath. Total school shooter material if that was a thing back then. A guy who used to bully me in 4th grade striked me with a glass bottle in my face. Right in between my eyebrows. The bottle broke and injured me and that kid got away with almost killing me. Our principal just said it's not our business. I feel like that would be a good time for your parents to get the cops involved. Knew about a guy who abused stray dogs. Everyone agreed the guy was going to kill someone. When he went too far was when they found a dead dog in a dumpster in the back with knife wounds. 
He didn't get charged with anything cause it was circumstantial at best but everyone knew he did it. Glad I moved out of state after my first year of high school. Shoved another dude's face into a table so hard it broke his nose and knocked out his two front teeth. Now the dude has to permanently have fake teeth. One afternoon, a fight broke out between two boys. No big deal. Super common. My classmates and I were just kind of hanging out. Our female teacher was on the intercom with front office, but then we heard it. Sounded like something being hit against the lockers. So of course we all went into the hallway. One guy was beating the other guy's head against a locker. Hard, blood everywhere. Three male teachers pulled the bully off the other poor kid and took him to the office. Ambulance and cops were called. Bully was expelled and sent to juvenile hall. The other guy spent the day at the air and came back to school a week later. I, a jaded sophomore, thought that bully went way too far. People get into fights, sure, but trying to kill a guy? Too far, bro. My widow dad remarried and I got to switch from one of the worst schools in the county to the best rated public high school in the county for 11th and 12th grades. No almost murders, just some pot smoking and a few kids selling their Oderol. It's not as bad as the others on here, but I thought it was pretty bad. In my class, we had an autistic kid who would occasionally just start dancing out of nowhere. The first time he did it, a bunch of druggies in my class start to mock his dances. He was obviously upset, but what made him even more upset was that they were also just talking crap about him too. Saying stuff like he's so freaking annoying, why is he in our class, and why the frick is he always doing this crap. They called him retarded and a lot of others like that. I definitely thought it was over the edge and totally disrespectful, and so did everybody else in the class. I had been sexually assaulted and all the school knew because my abuser wrote out the event for his creative writing class after which my bully ran up and humped my leg and told me that I must have liked it because of what my abuser said. Nobody ever took me seriously. When the bully died in a house fire, I didn't grieve at all. I'm really sorry that happened to you. The abuser is a freaking douchebag. What a horrible thing to do. I hope you're better now. In high school. She wasn't a bully exactly to everyone, she wasn't popular, but she said to this guy who had some learning developmental issues that if she was his dad she wouldn't have killed herself too. Kid tried to kick her, if I'd been in the class at the time, I would have beat the crap out of her for him. Freaking B. He shoved a kid down the stairs. Kid broke a collarbone. Broken collarbone kid was pulled out mid-year and switched to homeschool. Bully went on being popular. I went to a really crappy high school where if you graduated we termed it gladiator graduation. We legit had a mini policy station inside the school with 6 officers and 3 detectives. Needless to say there were bullies of VI wear. I've seen guns drawn on people and made to strip to their undies and walk around outside. Girls spit razors out of their mouths and give out buck 50s. Crap was wild, smh. They punched a smaller special ed kid on the bus while they were sitting down. I only knew, I didn't ride the bus, because I had friends who sent me the video, the smaller kid won. He tried to light a kid on fire, then he started a forest fire, fortunately we were down the street from a fire depth, so only one tree burned down. I know it's not nearly as bad as the stuff I've read in this thread, but I still wanted to share it. So just to start I was bullied most of my life due to various reasons but I think the biggest one was me being a male with long hair. I often got called a freaking gay emo trans metallica shithead. Honestly one of the rarest insults I've ever heard. First it was just my classmates. Then the whole school and after that even the teachers started to get in. Because my grades and my general attitude towards other people got worse. I wonder why. After 3 years of this crap I was almost at the breaking point. Fortunately it was the last day of school for the year so I wouldn't see these suckers for some time and just be able to isolate myself in my room in true gothic fashion. Unfortunately one of my worst bullies rode the same bus as me. I only remember standing there, reading a book while I was waiting for the bus. Suddenly she tried to get into an argument with me, but I stayed calm. She then proceeded to smack the book right out of my hands on the ground. 
I of course asked what the frick was wrong with her and she just started yelling at me and insulting me and in the end she told that if me and just a little piece crap were laying on the ground and burning she'd get a fire extinguisher save the piece of crap and then beat me to death with the fire extinguisher just let me burn to death. I know this doesn't sound like much but for my 13 year old psyche it was a pretty devastating blow. I started tearing up and in the end my mum picked me up. When I arrived at home I just laid in my bed cried a little more and then slept for 18 hours. After this incident I decided to switch school. The bullying didn't get better though it just shifted from mental bullying, getting called a faggot etc. 250 times per day, to physical bullying, just getting beaten up on a weekly basis. P.S. To anybody who read this whole story, thanks for listening to my problems. WTF this is equally bad if not worse than some of the others. I'm so sorry that happened to you. What was the most legendary thing a student did at school? They found out the password for the high school's website and edited all sorts of things. Whether it was exposing certain faculty for being scummy creepy by rewriting their bias or changing the campus security and safety tab to snitches get stitches. It made quite the buzz for years to come and as far as I know, they never got caught. Someone at my school found out the Wi-Fi password so we could all have free Wi-Fi. Piano in the middle of the theater stage. Unattended high school seniors wandering around during study hall. One of the students sits down and starts banging on the keys and screaming random lyrics. The rest of us are sitting in the seats. While he's banging away, the side stage door opens and the principal is standing there. Obviously had heard the ruckus and came to investigate. The student on the piano has their back to the principal and doesn't notice. We are rolling with laughter as he continues to make up ridiculous lyrics and mash the keys. Unaware. He stops to admire his fans and the principal clears her throat. He turns around to see her. He slowly turns back to the piano. Closes the rack over the keys. Expression unchanged. He calmly gets up and walks to the stage door opposite of the principal and exits the stage. Minutes go by as we are dying with laughter and the principal is still just standing there assessing. Then, the same student appears in the sound booth behind us having gone under the stage, now wearing a woman's dress and wig that he had found in the changing rooms. He throws open the window and shouts down Miss Thompson. I heard a ruckus and came running to see what was afoot. The principal just laughed and exited stage right. We only had like a week left and she didn't care. My friend once was pee off at the rest of us guys. Five of us. He chased us into the bathroom because he wanted to be a tough guy and thought one of us was hiding in a stall. He says peekaboo I see you and kicks the stall door in on a teacher we all knew. Taking a crap. The teacher said I see you too Nathan. Now close the door. I will die the day I forget about that lol. The teacher's response was legendary. Maybe not legendary, but an interesting, and funny, experiment. There were three high schools in my hometown. Two of them, both named after famous historical figures of said town, were in a sort of rivalry with each other, nothing serious, but the students would casually trash talk the other school a lot, mostly in good fun. Each school had a display case with a bust of their respective historical namesake somewhere in the building. They were just some decoration, object that you would pass by every single day and pay little attention to. So we figured we'd test how little attention people actually paid these things. So one night, a few buddies of mine and I got together. Most of us were from my school, but we had a few inside men from the other one as well. We split up into two teams, got access to both buildings simultaneously, picked open the very cheap locks on the display cases, grabbed the busts and switched them. Keep in mind, these schools were not that close to one another, and none of us had been old enough to drive at that point, so we had to carry these freaking limestone busts through half the town. We then locked the busts into the display cases again and left. We had managed completely non-destructive entry to both schools, so nobody ever found out. It took almost an entire school year for anyone to notice. To this day, no teacher has ever found out who was responsible. But no damage was done, so they didn't try too hard to figure it out. This is most certainly legendary. This kid in my class put the school for sale on Craigslist. He provided the school's attendance office number as a point of contact because everyone hated the receptionist there. They were getting calls from interested buyers for days who wanted to buy a multiple acres of property with a big swimming pool and a track. 
Some kids put up Craigslist ads for free brand new TVs with my school's number listed as the contact and they received thousands of calls by like 10am. It was legendary. This kid once brought a backpack full, and I mean completely full of marbles to school. He went to the main staircase near the front up the third floor and dumped the whole bag over the stairwell. How those marbles didn't break the glass trophy case at the bottom is beyond me but marbles went everywhere. Surprisingly he never got caught. He either managed to run to one of the stairwells at the end of the hall and get to the bottom before teachers had time to react or he hid somewhere until the first bell rang. There was this guy who was almost universally liked in my high school. Did everything. AP classes theater, football, track. His grades were good but he wasn't the valedictorian. That didn't stop him from getting up during the graduation ceremony and giving a speech like there was nothing strange about it, and they let him finish, too. That must be planned. A kid hit the fire alarm when the mayor was visiting our school. For context, we had an assembly the week before where we were specifically told not to hit the fire alarm during the mayor's visit unless there was an actual fire, as it was a common occurrence at our school to just hit the fire alarm whenever. One of my friends brought in a universal remote and tuned it to the TV in the lunch hall. This TV's original remote had long since been lost so he had the only one. Instead of the news during lunch he would change it to sitcoms etc. The teachers were pretty clueless and kept flicking through dozens of channels only for him to immediately change back. They even started turning it off. He just turned it back on again. About a month of this and the teachers finally gave up. Nobody except our immediate friend group knew it was him doing this, but the entire school had whispers about this mystery man for ending the scourge that was the news channel. Teacher tries to open the door. It does not move. Teacher says he'll ask the maintenance dudes to help open it. While he's away, dude tries to force the door open. Instead falls through the door, as he just creates a hole. Doing so, it does however open the door. Teacher comes back without maintenance guy. Teacher blanks for a moment, then says thanks for opening the door. I'll need to know who to thank. No one answers, but only one dude has pieces of wood in his hair. So he got caught. Mess with the bull, and you'll get the horns. I honestly thought that's where it was going. Not mine, but someone super glue the computer mice, mouses, to the desks in the computer lab. It was my son. My son did that. He never got caught, just told me long after the fact. I love getting to tell my mom these stories now that I'm an adult. You remember that time. Well this is what actually happened haha. Our grading system is 1, fail, 2, pass, 3, 4, 5, great. One dude stole the diary, book where all the grades are written for all students in class. He was failing a lot of stuff so everybody just presumed he would throw it away or change 1s into 2s. He just changed all 3 into hearts and returned it. Madman. Don't really know what happened to him after that I think he just got some sort of warning but wasn't expelled. My grading system is reversed Lomeo. One best. Five worst. It was legendarily stupid. We had mandatory swimming classes in my sophomore year of high school. Anyways. Three days a week. The school was getting bomb threats and all of us would have to leave class on go to the gym. The threats always happened at the same time. This went on for weeks and weeks. It turns out it. There was this kid who didn't want to swim and who was using a payphone down the block to call in the threats. This was 1985. He goes suspended for 2 weeks and had to take gym for summer school. He is a legend to this day, yet I can't remember his name. Comma suspended for 2 weeks and had to take gym for summer school. This is how you know times have changed. Pull that crap nowadays. You'll be lucky if you're not arrested. Picked up the front end of the tractor, deadlift style, with the teacher sitting in the driver's seat of the tractor. The tractor was part of the ag department. It was a rural school. We had two pretty epic senior pranks in my HS days. The first was somebody replaced the tape of the morning announcements with a close up of a hardcore anal pee scene. At first I thought maybe my homeroom teacher was a perv but turns out it was broadcast throughout the school. Then my senior year a fellow student got the bright idea to dress up as a gorilla and go up on the roof of the school with a bag of bananas. The SWAT team was called in and it was kinda scary seeing guys with assault rifles outside our classroom window. 
Then someone told me it was just so and so on the roof in a gorilla costume. He got in a lot of trouble considering he was 18 at the time. Teacher everyone hated just cause he was a pure bully. We had a fair snowfall and he was on yard patrol this shy kid launched the perfect snowball 40 ft plus and it went in his cup of juice. Splashing out and soaking him. Kid went from zero to hero real quick. Kid is going places. The senior prank one year was hiring a mariachi band to follow our principal around all day. He loved it went classroom to classroom so everyone could see it and take pictures videos and have a fun break from class. Kid broke into the PA speaker room or whatever it's called, locked himself in and started publicly dismissing everyone's future detention sentences one by one. Then he started to just burp in the mic before we heard the teachers and the principal break and up the principal shouted you dang. Then it got cut off. Dismissing everyone future detention sentences one by one. Hey, I just wanted you to know that you can't just say the word bankruptcy and expect anything to happen. I didn't say it. I declared it. My English teacher was close to retirement and had really poor eyesight. A mate started the lesson on the right side of the classroom and managed to shuttle both himself and his desk to the back of the room and then over to the left and over to the he then managed to climb through the window, sauntered round the building, came back into the room and apologized for being late. Not even to leave, just to see if he could. A few years after I graduated, the school was preparing to take their assessment tests, which rate the schools. Many people think these tests are a waste of time, but they are important to school administrators. So, the principal orders that some classes are interrupted, in order to make sure that all the kids have refreshers and some basic math and writing skills. A few kids in a US history honors class were angry, they resented the interruption. As the classes were preparing them for an independent AP exam that awarded college credit, in response, they decided to intentionally sabotage the assessment tests. Our school was in an upper middle class area, and regularly scored in low 90s, the top 10%. Then, suddenly, the school suddenly scored in the mid low 80s. Turns out that 15-20 students out of 300 turning in absolute zeros can impact an average score. School administrators went berserk, stories were circulated, students were threatened, but nothing came of it, the students never confessed, the tests were anonymous, the school rules didn't forbid poor performance, it helped that the students were led by kids whose parents were well trained in protesting during the 1960s, was a great scene. I agree, what a great scene. Cut off his thumb in wood shop, and they couldn't find the thumb. It surfaced weeks later in the shop. Months later I found myself sitting next to the wood shop instructor at dinner on a field trip and got to hear the entire saga in full gory detail, while trying to eat dinner. I would keep the thumb and make it into a necklace and then give to him as like a present. In high school, two seniors who had been buds since forever, got into a fight in the hallway in between class periods. What makes it legendary is that they first met in Taekwondo class, when they were in kindergarten. Movies just show the performative aspect of martial arts. This was just, they were doing flying kicks at each other. It was so brutal, the teachers didn't dare to break them up. They only stopped because they got tired from beating each other senseless. Groupot in the lunchroom planters. Several guys got a VW Beetle on the roof above main entrance one night created a fake student that was elected homecoming king. This was not discovered by the faculty for 3 months. Post update, could not remember the fake student name but pinged an old classmate. It was Elmo Dudley, dumb teachers, made the local news. What a riot. This is legendary in a bad way. One girl from my wife's high school stole a male teacher's pen drive, found a video of him jacking off on the couch with two other guys also jacking off and sent it around to the whole school. This was in a fairly conservative place and he was not openly gay. He didn't get fired or anything but she says that he was a really nice fun teacher up until that point and afterwards was dry and grumpy to most of the students. On the one hand, you probably shouldn't bring a file of your amateur P to your job at the high school. On the other hand, what the student did was harmful and illegal on many different levels. A guy I was friends with hid 26 iceberg lettuces around college. As far as he was aware only 9 were found. Places included urinals, lockers, behind books on shelves, 
balanced on banisters and behind lights, it became a full scale witch hunt for these lettuces. He probably only hid 9 but said there were 26 so people would keep looking. I don't think the person who did it was ever caught, but during my junior year of high school, someone snuck in chickens. So there were a couple dozen chickens just roaming the halls and all the teachers were panicking. For some reason, the faculty treated them like rabid dogs. There's nothing funnier than seeing little roadblocks set up around a chicken and four teachers all red faced and pulling their own hair. I bet their fav show is OITNB. We had an English teacher in training with poor classroom management skills. She understood little of what was going on in front of her. To prove that point a friend of mine jumped from a classroom window, it was a good 6 feet to the ground, mid class and then casually walked through the schoolyard, back into the school and then came back into the classroom. He told the teacher that he had gone to the bathroom, she nodded and just kept on with her lesson. We had a teacher like that, it was to the point that even the slackers were on board with reminding them to stop telling another story, and well, teach as the tests she used were already prepared and would be random stuff we wouldn't know was coming. He threw a big fucking firecracker near her outlet, then when the teacher asked what happened he said that the outlet blew up, the teacher believed him. For senior prank a group of kids dressed up in all black with masks, they ran down the main hall of the school with industrial buckets of cheap vegetable oil pouring it everywhere, I mean everywhere right before the bell rang for passing period. Kids were slipping and falling all over the place spreading the oil even further throughout the school. It was so bad they ended up sending everyone home so they could clean up the mess. The school did an investigation pulling camera footage from campus and interviewing students. Of course the kids were bragging to friends about their accomplishments so the suspects were pulled into the office. They didn't even need to interrogate them. They knew they all did it. How? They were all wearing the exact same shoes when they pulled it off. They were suspended for 5 days. School was pretty cool with the whole thing. Happened at my school. Baby oil though. Teacher fell and broke a hip. Someone bought a dead pig and left its parts in several people's car in the middle of summer. No one knew who did it but each of the targets were notorious bullies and so many of us found it to be great justice. A boy in my year did ketamine before our politics exam and got an A. Drugs. Man. A special needs kid got a two day in school suspension because he threw a sharpened pencil into the drop ceiling tile. He saw a friend of mine do it and thought it was the coolest thing ever. A kid on the football team heard about what had happened and protested the suspension directly to the assistant principal. The bus principal stuck firm to his decision and threatened and if anyone else gets caught, it will be out of school suspensions. The following Monday the entire second floor was closed down for the morning. Come to find out the kid in the football team got into the school over the weekend and just blanketed the entire second floor ceiling with sharpened pencils. The video of it was stellar. I still have no clue who did it, but someone went around spraying mace or pepper spray or something into the ventilation shafts during lunch. My school had two lunch periods to accommodate our population. The first time was in the second lunch period during which I had class. I was walking in the stairwells to class when I started coughing, along with a lot of others. It felt like I'd swallowed sawdust. I was near the science labs, so I thought it might have been a chemical reaction gone wrong. The next day during lunch the upper forum was completely deserted. As I was going upstairs, my friends and I started noticing we felt the same, like there was sawdust in our throats. When we opened the door off the stairwell to the forum. The effect increased tenfold and a teacher ushered us back into the stairwell. We'd barely gotten to class when the entire school was evacuated. If the culprit was ever found, I never heard about it. And word spreads fast, so I'm guessing they got away with it. To the culprit, frick you for the throat pain. But thanks for the 15 minute evacuation so I didn't have to go to science class. This is how it feels to smell cheap X body spray. The senior class ahead of me pulled their prank on the day they were all gone on their last field trip. They all bought different alarm clocks and set them to go off at the same time, then zip tied their lockers shut. It was absolute mayhem while the poor janitor and teachers were cutting them open. Had a friend, Will, who didn't finish an English assignment on time. As punishment, the teacher asked him to look up the definition of and write a 5 page essay on the need for diligence. 
When he opened the dictionary, the first definition was careful and persistent work and effort. The second definition was a public stagecoach. Will proceeded to write a tremendous five-pager on the need, or lack thereof, of public stagecoaches. Not my high school, but our sister school the seniors decided to put a dead deer in the cafeteria ceiling as a senior prank. Still not 100% sure why they thought this was a good idea. Crap would have went 100 to 200 real quick if he played Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer when everyone went to go eat. I went to high school in the early 70s. Our city had just implemented the desegregation of the high schools by closing the only black high school and busing those kids all over the city to the white high schools. Racial tensions were pretty high at my school. Many of the white kids resented having to go to school with black kids and the black kids were understandably upset at being yanked out of their own high school and bust. It was lunchtime in the cafeteria. I was sitting at the next table over from where a white guy was sitting. I see a black guy walking up to the white kid. He stops in front of the white kid and say hey. Honky the white guy says hey. N. The whole room got real quiet. I could see kids looking around trying to decide what to do and where to run or hide, the expectation being that there was about to be a fight. Then both the black guy and white guy bust out laughing and hug each other. The black guy sits down and they eat lunch together. People looked so confused as they couldn't comprehend what just happened. It turns out both guys were in drama class together and had decided to troll everyone. That's pretty wholesome. And they probably defused a ton of tension in the air by showing everyone else that it was fine to mingle with each other. Hope they're still rocking strong. During our sats, heard wheels coming down the hallway. Look up to see out the window by the classroom door and a kid from the grade below me was riding a skateboard down the hallway with a bong in hand. Smoking it. Not students, but the senior class made the national news way back when I still in kindergarten. Senior prank they bought two Madagascar hissing cockroaches and bred them. End of the year comes. I believe they smeared meat all over the halls, then released the roaches. Needless to say, the high school was closed for a bit. One of the people in that class is now my step-sibling. A little foggy on the details but a few stink bombs went off at the same time in three separate parts of the building. But no one was ever caught or punished for it. Then they searched everyone before graduation that year to make sure it didn't happen again. I wonder though if it was something more like liquid butt or fart in a can cause the school was convinced it was stink bombs but they never found evidence of them. Long ago, during my senior year, we had an advanced chemistry class, so only like 13 students. It was a test day, so we had a plan. Our valedictorian asks to go to the bathroom before the test. He leaves and sprints to the pay phones, long ago, next to the cafeteria and calls the office. Says he is a police officer and needs to speak with our teacher immediately. The office calls him to the phone and he leaves the room. The rest of us bust out a grocery store birthday cake, put up birthday decorations and balloons, pass out party hats, the whole nine yards. Teacher gets to the office. The Val says blah, 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 Mickey Mouse, and hangs up and sprints back to the class. Teach gets back and we start singing happy birthday. He was like but, it's not my birthday needless to say we had our cake and ate it. Test was postponed until the next week. I really want to call bulls on this, but I also really want to believe that this happened. When I was a student teacher some quiet kid was getting crap from a bully for like a week. So he waited till they were in music class and the bully was on the piano facing the wall. Then very deliberately picked up a guitar, stalked across the room, and smashed it to pieces against the bully's head. All of this was caught on CCTV. That was one video that definitely got circulated among the faculty. Friends of mine during senior year wrote in the snow from us to you. A big frick you. It was legendary for three reasons. 1. The field was directly in front of the giant window on the main stairs. Visible from the ground level and upper level. Each letter was about 10x4 feet. 2. The principal knew it was our group of friends but not which ones and never found out. 3. The message was impeccably well written. The principal complimented us on that, which is additionally incredible considering how drunk they were when it was written. Cypress Creek High School Class of 07. Senior Prank. All the seniors brought the picnic tables out of the cafeteria area and stacked them up into a pyramid in the outdoor amphitheater. 
and then brought chickens to school and let them loose. Mayo I remember this one. Threw a bully through a window and single handedly ended zero tolerance on fighting in my school. I quote, if I'm getting suspended for fighting I'm going to make it worth my while. I mean, yep, if you will be punished even if you stay in the fetal position not fighting back, then you might as well fight as hard as you ever have in your life so that your bully strongly thinks twice before fricking with you again. School just decided to give everyone iPads after a few years of letting physics class use them as their textbooks. At lunch everyone turned on airdrop to share memes, which they weren't supposed to do. However, the teachers let it slide and figure it isn't worth punishing since everyone does it and nothing super inappropriate has been found yet. Drugs, pee, etc. One kid in my younger sibling's class airdropped a meme about being the principal that wasn't inappropriate and used a photo of him when he was a math teacher earlier in his career. He found it on some archived page on the internet. From what I recall, the text used was more looking for laughs about how he used to teach math and now is the principal. Basically just some dumb thing that staff would have laughed off after telling him not to use school staff in airdropped memes. The kid who did this had never acted out in school. The worst he probably did was forget an assignment or two. He got detention for a whole week. The principal has a complex. No other student has gotten in as much trouble for airdropping things at the school. A kid getting detention for airdropping a meme about the principal from his school issued iPad. Now I feel really old. What were you known for in high school? People always called me Ralphie because people thought I looked like him from a Christmas story. A lot of people didn't know what my actual name was and just assumed it was Ralphie because that's what everyone called me. I got Farkas because of my red hair. I hate Christmas. I was mostly known for being that girl who was insanely tall but had zero ounces of athleticism. A nickname for all four years was Big Kate. Go figure. I was the movie guy. People would try to get into my group for group projects involving videos because they knew I'd willingly do almost all the work and turn out a good product. I'm a film major now, so it's stuck. The backup smart guy. Need help with an assignment, but the local genius is busy or is silently, or actually, mocking you for your inability to learn something? I was probably your man. Oh, I loved you in high school. I didn't really need help. But you were fun to hang out with. I was the weird kid with the cool parents. I was into heavy metal. Video games. Always changed my hairstyle and clothes but my parents were super cool about letting me have parties at the house so I was always very social. This is basically me. Being the one with the cool parents is freaking rad. There were only two out gay kids in my class. One of them I'll call Rick. Rick wasn't just gay. Rick was flaming gay. Rick was 7 inches from the midday sun gay. In high school I was known as the well at least he's not like Rick. Gay guy in the class. My brother had a friend in college like you and an acquaintance like Rick and Rick once asked the other guy if he was truly gay. Because he sure didn't act like it. I was known as the quiet kid people have said to me are you one of those really awkward kids who is eventually going to shoot everyone. I would like to just say that I am not one of those people who would shoot anyone. I'm a quiet kid. Wouldn't shoot. I was the guy who people thought was going to start a big business and become the next Bill Gates. I was also known for being funny. I'm now a preschool teacher. And everyone is supportive of me. But no one expects it when I haven't talked to them and then tell them. I was invisible in high school. I was not known at all. It was handy because even the bullies ignored me. I would be amazed if anyone remembered me. Sad go up a few posts and you'll see that I'm working on a cool time machine. A few of us are going back in time to redo some high school and make it better. Come join us. We have beers. I experienced two senior years because I'm a dumb boss. I was dating this girl, Allison, who was a grade beneath me. So in my second senior year we were in the same grade. All of my friends had graduated and I didn't know too many underclassmen. All throughout high school I was known as Albie's II. My second senior year I didn't have a name. I was just known as Allison's boyfriend. Being a white guy that dated a lot of black women. Still not sure how I feel about that. I am with your there brother. 
In 10th grade I talked to one of the super hot girls and we texted and she told me to go to the boys restroom in the history wing. I, of course filled with rage and hormones that fueled my rock hard erection did so. I then fingered her in that restroom whilst making out. A teacher saw her coming out the boys restroom as I was just drinking some water from the water fountain. My friends then found out because they saw her getting scolded for it. I was then known as golden fingers and yes i did wash them eventually jk sniff i wasn't known for it but i lost my virginity in a low traffic bathroom during fourth period my 11th grade i'm super proud of that story i went to a party after my senior year of high school that had a bunch of underclassmen there and one of them came up to me and said you were the one who was tight with all the teachers right and he was right i always talked with teachers Randomly went to their classrooms and sat down and just chatted during their downtime between classes. I liked talking politics and sports but nobody in school gave a crap about that stuff except teachers, so I talked to them. I liked doing this with teachers just because it was fun. Teachers were a lot cooler than people have them credit for. I would have said, the guy who skipped school every day. I lacked confidence and only had a handful of people who I considered friends. Not popular, not unpopular, bad home life and cut school to go bowling, a lot. I assumed a few people would remember that I was pretty smart, but, I actually asked a bunch of people this last summer at my 30 year reunion. I don't lack confidence anymore and I even sat down for a bit at the popular table. Yes, it still exists, at the reunion. Here's how they describe me, smart and funny, always joking it never unkind. Evidently, I helped a lot of people with a lot of homework and a lot of classes. I never actually did any homework, just remembered stuff. They remembered me being much smarter than I ever displayed in high school. Heck, I barely graduated. My family moved before I graduated and I quit. They just sent me a diploma. I was remembered for completely different things than I ever imagined. My high school was the first in the nation to give a laptop to every student. I was known as the kid that crashed the school's network for a week. It really wasn't intentional. I swear. I was forever known for being that kid who got expelled for finding a P doppelganger of his teacher and accidentally spreading it across three different high schools. A total of 5,000 students. It actually ended up making me a huge number of friends all over the city, and I became a recognizable face almost everywhere I went. The teacher ended up leaving the school the next year, and actually moved to Brazil the year after. The Mormon one. Hey, you CBFW86. How many wives are you going to have? Dunno yet. How many sisters do you have? Fight. As a fellow Mormon, this will be my new reply for that question. I was known for being a S. I was actually a virgin but BB talking. Oh and another commenter reminded me, for being busty, I had the biggest boobs in my year and tried to tape them down. A very uncomfortable time in my life. I feel like girls with big boobs or asses are stereotyped as S. Especially by other women. It isn't surprising really, with those qualities being shown as the sexual preference. I just like the faulty logic society says men like big boobs butts. Therefore anyone with these qualities must touch men dongs. Or, more basically, jealous BB jealous. Well my entire group, if you needed something we would get it done. From illicit substances to kinda under the table deals. I say it's really helped my networking skills. I need to hear more. I was known as the person who would eat anything, gum off the bleachers, food that fell on the ground, crayons, anything. Pretty sure this guy might be a goat. I started smoking pot a couple years before everyone else. For a couple years I was a stoner in a derogatory sense. Then when everyone else started smoking I was a stoner in a less derogatory sense. Also I hooked up with about half of the girls I graduated with. Girls never gave me the time of day until about halfway through junior year so I took advantage while I could. However, due to my proclivities for marijuana and easy women I didn't graduate on time. So I guess I was known for making poor life choices. I was hands down the most unpopular kid in high school. I had it all. I had Asperger's. I was a goth. I hated everybody and everything and I thought wearing loads of black makeup was a good idea. Coming to school laden with chains was a bad idea too. 
Additionally people assumed I was on drugs because I was so spaced out all the time. The freaking potheads who frequently passed bags of weed around in class assumed I was on hard drugs. I had never touched a drug in my life besides caffeine at that point. I just spent a lot of time daydreaming, drawing, not paying attention to people. The people also assumed I was rich for some reason. I have no idea why. We were rather poor. It was all good. I eventually made friends once I wised up a bit and people grew older and we all stopped being, well, kids. I kind of like how things went in high school. Sure I had no friends and everybody hated me, but I learned a lot. It helped me to adapt and become a little more relatable to people later on. I want pictures. Regularly being on acid, this was the early 90s. It was super cheap and everywhere. Some joggers in Kansas were supplying it all. That's a fabled substance where I'm from. It can't be found. I was the diabetic pothead who looked and acted like Hermione Granger. It didn't help that my boyfriend, who was also a huge stoner, was a ginger. Before we started dating, I was that kid. I got my lips pierced underneath the stairwell, wore suspenders with pink lighting bolts on that, that I hand stitched mind you, literally sewed my jeans even tighter so that it was a struggle to put them on, and had the god. Awful David Bowie from Labyrinth Poof Hair. Then I started taking drugs and became normal-ish. Still got nominated for most unique in high school. Mainly because my hair changed color at least once a month and despite all my drug extracurriculars, I still managed to be one of the top students in my class. Comma wore suspenders with pink lighting bolts on that, that I hand stitched mind you. This is cool. This makes me feel better about being nominated for most unique in middle school. Everyone knew of me, at least. You couldn't miss the 6 feet 3 inches white boy decked out in leather and chains with a massively wicked mohawk amidst a sea of Hispanics. Everyone thought I was also a white supremacist as well despite dating a Mexican girl. White supremacists can and do still date people of color. They aren't very nice to them, but it happens. I jokingly began saying I was an underwear model and changed my occupation on Facebook to model at Calvin Klein. That caught on pretty quick and before I knew it, people actually thought I was an underwear model. You can be an all-star soccer and football player, have a 4.0 GPA, be personable and polite to your teachers, welcoming and inclusive to every one of your classmates no matter what social circle they come from. But you frick one fat girl, that's it, that's your my legacy. I'm known as the guy who got yelled at a lot for wearing a speedo to school on sports day. I'm on water polo and it said to wear your sports uniform, so I did it. My name was known for dating this really popular girl in school but I was invisible otherwise. When I met people and told them my name they were always shocked when they realized I was the one dating the popular girl. Yeah I was dating out of my league. D. I was hooking up with a chick in a room. Quite a few of my other friends were in there. I ate her out for about a good 15 minutes and when it came to actually having sex, I couldn't get it up. Either it was the alcohol or that there was a bunch of people into room just watching. After that weekend it seemed the whole school knew come Monday. Viagra was my nickname the rest of the year. That black girl from Texas. It was hard we moved here when I was 15. Back in Texas I would have been starting HS in 10th grade. We just switched from junior highs but here I was already a sophomore. Everybody had already known each other for a year. I also ended up switching schools after a month. I had to decide within a few days to switch. I'd finally started making friends and feeling comfortable but I switched cause it was a better school and had a better orchestra program. People didn't really come around till senior year and by then I was so freaking over everything and everybody. Teenagers are fickle and I wasn't fun. My depression was diagnosed soon after I switched schools. To people who had great HS experiences I'm jealous but I'm happy for you. Still technically in school for another month. I left school for 6 weeks to have surgery recover etc and when I came back everybody was really shocked because they thought I had died. An acquaintance told me everyone thought I went on a crack binge and got murdered by my drug dealer. No, I've never done crack. And I don't know any drug dealers. I laughed a lot at hearing this. I figured I was the closest thing to being invisible in school. Nice to know I'm fooling everybody haha. 
the girl that got into a car wreck and ran into a teacher's house and put a Ford Bronco sized hole in her house next to her Christmas tree. We even made the front page of the newspaper. Everyone about 300 stroke 900 people were in on the joke, would say frick you gromps every time they saw me in the hallway. It started by us playing a drinking game at one of my school's Friday bars, it's Denmark. The game was called frick you and basically you place cards and say frick you, name, and the person mentioned has to drink if he doesn't have a response. The entire table then decided to very audibly focus me. The rest of the school just heard a bunch of people yell frick you gromps frick you gromps frick you gromps. Good times, D. Quite a few of the girls in my freshman class had huge crushes my brother. I sold his senior class photo to several of them for $10 each. I was known as Aris for having an older boyfriend. Then later in my sophomore year, the rumor went around that I was gay. Oh well. High school was long ago. Once in 9th grade a local Hollywood video was having a liquidation sale and for like 2 bucks I got several huge rolls of stickers that said now $9.99. I must have had over 5000 stickers. So I decided to put the stickers on everything. I mean everything. But I hid them well so that you wouldn't see them unless you were looking for them except for one on a sign near the entrance. I even got a few on the buses. Eventually people started to notice. Then I got bold and put them in more obvious places until I got caught. I almost got the stickers put in the yearbooks but the teacher I got on board with it left and the new one didn't get it. They confiscated my main role but I have 5 more. Maybe I need to redecorate my college campus. They can take my role but they can never take my freedom. I was the person that did everything, especially band, marching band, jazz band, orchestra, check, theater, check, swimming, check, AP accelerated courses, check. I was asked for help in classes all the time. My school had a little convenience store inside, and guess who acted as manager? Yep, check that one off the list. 2. Oh, I do have one incident that comes to mind. At the time, I was dating this guy who was really nice, but kinda clueless when it came to others. One day, he was standing outside the cafeteria, just happily waving at our little group of friends. He was completely unaware of the group of thugs surrounding him, looking like they're about to jump him and take his wallet and crap. My school was a little ghetto, so this was a very realistic possibility. I saw this happening, jumped up from the table, broke through the group and grabbed his stupid butt before something bad happened. One guy in particular tried to get in my face, and I rolled my eyes at him and said, Oh, frick you and just walked away. I didn't, and still don't, think it was a huge deal. But a bunch of people at the next table overwatched the whole thing unfold and started applauding as I sat back down. I apparently got a reputation for not taking crap, and nobody really tried to frick with me or my friends after that. I didn't even consider myself popular, but I still have people I don't remember from high school approach me all the time. Still in high school, graduating in 3 months though, but I'm known as the guy who can solve the Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds and blindfolded in 30. That's never a good thing. You know that one kid you pick on in school and after a while he goes fricking berserk? Yeah, that was me. Also weird emo kid, which would pee me off because I was the only kid in school into thrash metal. Which isn't fricking emo. Thank you. Man I swear to god. People at my school confuse those all the time which is ironic because if anything, I'm more into hard rock and heavy metal as opposed to all of those subgenres of metal. And my school also has a decent sized metal community. One would think they would know their crap. I was the one guy who everyone in school knew, but no one was really friends with. I just lacked the fricks to give to actually get to know everyone there because I knew I was moving junior year and I'd never see them again. The girl that finally punched that stupid girl in the face that everyone wanted to punch in the face. Also, it was on the football field at the end of the only live broadcasted game of the season. She seriously deserved it though. The very strange one who disappeared without telling anyone for a year, my sophomore year, and came back for junior year 80 pounds lighter and never said a word about it and then graduated early, and as the girl who got breast implants at 16. I was the guy who would pirate crap and sell it to the other kids, even got requests from some of the teachers a couple of times. 
I was one of the first kids to get non dial up internet in the school. Combining this with me being the only one who knew about BitTorrent at the time everyone else was on Kazalim UR Emule ETC, meant that I could obtain software, music, and movies much faster than anyone else. I mentioned this in passing to a couple guys in one of my classes and they asked if I could get some songs for them and put them on a CD. I initially said no but when they offered to pay for it, a penniless me couldn't turn them down. They later told others, who then told others, until I was getting requests from kids outside of my year group. By my final year I was making a little over £70 per week doing this. It paid for my first gaming PC and made my first few months at university much easier. I was weird, like really weird, and loud very loud. I was one of those people that had to stick out no matter what. You sound annoying. Smiling too much. My nickname was Smiley. People always thought I was either lying or laughing at them. But in reality my face loved to smile and sometimes I just couldn't control it. What was a horrific rumor that went around your school that ended up being true? The teacher that was horrible to all her students didn't come in for months, was an old cholic who had a heart attack at the top of a set of stairs, fell and broke both her legs. To be honest 15 year old me didn't know how to react one way or the other. That's one way to avoid 12 steps. That the choir director was fooling around with a female student. When she turned 18 they got married. Bonus. It was strongly assumed he was gay due to his impressive level of fabulous. Similar story from my high school. The band teacher and a student eloped after graduation. He left his wife for her. But it's been 3 years and they're still married. So that's good. Everyone thought that these two teachers are freaking around after school. Just rumors but turns out that they were married and she kept her maiden name. I've no idea why they didn't dispel the rumors. They probably just kept it going for shoots and giggles. I worked in education and this is something that would get a chuckle round the teacher's lounge. That some girl that was in my class got into a fight and stabbed another girl with a fork. I didn't believe it, but then I saw the video of the event. And the girl who got stabbed posted pictures of her fork wounds. Bro, she's done. That a student had a broom handle shoved up his butt in the boys locker room. Turned out to be true when rape charges were pressed. The shop teacher in our middle school being a total PR-file pervert. The guy looked like your stereotypical sex offender. Big, round glasses, balding with unkempt hair, greasy face and really bizarre mannerisms. Myself and others figured that was just middle school BS. A couple years after I left he got busted for CP. A few of them. The band teacher was sleeping with his female students. He would start a relationship with a different high school senior every year. New York's age of consent is 17 so he didn't actually commit a sex offense that I'm aware of and he just resigned from his position. One of the girls is now a local stand-up comedian and made a passing reference to a teacher fetish in her stand-up routine when I saw her. The student killed in a car accident was actually run over by his drug dealer because he never paid for his weed. The police put things together pretty quickly but the school denied it was a murder the entire year. One of the gym teachers used to be a neo-Nazi. He never got his swastika tattoo removed and one day he didn't cover it up as well as he normally did and some student noticed it. He still works there. He was incredibly friendly to me and my brother, but I mean we're white so that doesn't mean anything. My brother always used to joke about the 7th 8th grade science teacher. Don't ever be alone with him he likes little boys. It was actually a well known joke around school. Fast forward 15 years later and guess who got arrested for liking little boys? The teacher. Not my brother. He died before the guy got popped so he never even got his told you so in. Oh he is rubbing it and you just can't hear him. My senior year there was a rumor that a guy had drugged and raped a classmate. The rumor started when they had both been out of school for several days. While he hadn't drugged her he had attacked her, beaten her, and tried to rape her before someone overheard and intervened. He went to jail and she was homeschooled for the rest of the year. In my high school there was a rumor that a girl got gang raped by the entire football team. Thought it was just a rumor till one of the guys on the team confirmed it. Someone had brought a gun and got busted in the bathroom before he could start shooting. They kept it hush but someone found out. It got passed around as a rumor for a few months before it got confirmed by video. 
the teacher that got 4 girls pregnant. I guess I can't be sure how many he actually did get pregnant. Bit after I left he was found out when a girl actually had his baby and he was fired and named in a royal commission. It wasn't as much of a crime back in the 90s. Should be a crime to name your kid that. There was a rumor at my high school that the German teacher, on the annual German club trip to Germany, encouraged the kids to get drunk. Since it was illegal in the US and legal there, turns out one of the reasons he wanted to get them drunk was to have mutual master bashan parties. Kind of disturbed it took 10 years for this crap to finally boil over. Our Germans and their sex parties. A girl in my school was picked on because people believed her mother was a prostitute. I found that this actually was true years later at a party. The poor girl was teased through all her years in school because of a true rumor about her mother. It's sad that the kids definitely heard the rumor from someone's parents. There was a rumor that two seniors were freaking on the school bus to our Votech school. Turns out there actually was two seniors, who were my friends, that were stealth freaking on the bus. The police came to our school and questioned everyone that rode the bus. It was at that point that I realized that the rumors were true. A girl ran away from home and everyone said it was because she was pregnant by a much older man. She was 15 at the time. We came to find out that she was indeed pregnant, and was expelled for being pregnant and that the man she'd been with ultimately wanted her to run off with her to Arizona or something. Since she wasn't in the school anymore, that was the last we heard of it. The super creepy Bushman 7th grade teacher who everyone was sure was a pedo, turned out to just be misunderstood while the super cool awesome music teacher everyone loved turned out to be the kitty diddler. In high school I was told that my English teacher had a website where she wrote stories about guys exposing themselves to her. I looked up her name and yeah it's true. She wrote that she liked it. Oh no. I went to high school with a couple that got married at 16. She came to school pregnant. Rumor was her husband's father got her pregnant. Seemed laughably unbelievable. Turned out to be 100% true. We lived in a nice suburb. This was unlike anything my school had seen. Male prostitution ring. Staffed by varsity athletes. There were only 4 of 5 of them. And they were all 18 year old seniors. Their pimps, for lack of a better word, were a teacher and one member of the office staff. It was the teacher's husband that figured it out when he caught her sleeping with one of her employees. It was really messed up. I felt horrible for the students, but even more so for the husband. Not only did he catch his wife having an affair, but he had to find out his spouse was playing madam at the local high school. Special needs student starts jacking off in class. The catch. He understood what he was doing and how bad it was at that time. He's just in butthole. That my high school English teacher and tennis coach was inviting young boys over to help with yard work but was actually hosting forced circle jerks and molesting them. He invited me once. I declined. His name was Skip Revel. Of freaking course his name was Skip. In primary, I think 5th grade, a girl from my class suddenly moved away. No warning. No goodbyes. She and her family just disappeared. Of course, rumors started circulating, and the most extreme was that her little sister, 2YO, I believe, had died in her sleep due to some kind of poisonous gas in their house and they had to move away. It turned out to be true. Once the gas was sorted out, their house was turned into a clinic so things like that wouldn't happen again since the only hospital was 30 minutes away. There was a rumor that this girl in my middle school was sexually active and some people started saying she was pregnant. This was about 17 years ago. Sadly, the rumor was true. This 12 year old girl was pregnant because her mother was whoring her out to a guy she knew. Another one. There was a rumor around about a guy in my senior year of high school going out with a 7th grade girl. It was almost true. He was dating a 13 year old girl in 8th grade. He was 18. Everyone thought he was a loser but the girl's parents either didn't know or didn't care. Holy. How did the school find out that her mom was doing this to her? A student disappeared between 2nd and 3rd grade. Rumor was his grandparents kidnapped him and defected to North Korea. Blew my mind years later when I found out it had been true and they recovered him. When I first read this I wondered why someone would defect from America to North Korea. Then I remembered America wasn't where everybody lived. Elementary school. 
We used to joke that a male teacher had a crush on one of the girl students in the 4th grade because he favored her all the time. Fast forward 15 years later, the girl is a mess, drugs boo skanky, and it turned out he was molesting her all through elementary school. That's the worst one here. We had three that stuck out. The physics teacher quit unexpectedly in the middle of the school year, and there was a rumor that he and a student had made some brilliant invention together after school and never needed to work again. It turns out he invented some kind of military power armor in his spare time. Dude is a freaking millionaire now. There was a rumor that two seniors got caught full on freaking on the drama room floor during lunch when the drama teacher went into the classroom to get something. The two ended up being the leads in the school play, and whenever they would screw up their lines, the drama teacher would march over, stand on the exact spot where they were freaking and publicly shame them. There was a rumor that the Spanish teacher drank straight cooking oil at school, which just seemed like a mean thing that kids would say about an extremely obese teacher. Dude asked me to help him fix his computer one day, and sure enough, there are jugs and jugs of cooking oil stashed under his desk, the gallons of the stuff and a half empty water bottle of it, lid off, next to his keyboard. He had a massive heart attack in class 4 years after I graduated and ended up getting a triple bypass. My high school was a freaking zoo. In high school, a very pretty blonde tall guidance counselor was promoted with a serious pay raise. We all joked and speculated that it was because she was fricking the superintendent because they were always giving each other frick me eyes across the halls. Turns out it was true. He resigned. She's still in that position. A girl in our school went missing over summer. Rumors flew around about how her two best friends were involved somehow. Turns out they were the ones who killed her. That my one armed gym teacher had to leave school in the middle of the year because he got caught with them that he was trying to plant in his ex-wife's car so that he could keep the kids. That turned into a huge deal at my little high school. No one made a big deal about how he was always walking around the school armed though. No one made a big deal about how he was always walking around the school armed though. Well, one armed. A girl I went to high school with. Straight A student. College scholarships everything disappeared one day. Not a kidnapping though. She got a boyfriend in Cali. Not a lot of money but mailed her a plane ticket. She left her cell phone. She left everything. Just took a backpack and the clothes on her back and flew to California. Dropped her entire life for this guy. Didn't tell her parents only told her friends. Not a clue what happened to her. I tried for too long to figure out what the lack of naps had to do with the story. That somebody was selling sexual favors in the toilets. Turns out it was true. Teacher saw a line of guys outside the boys toilets and figured something was up. Continued walking past and got another couple of teachers to back them up and cover themselves legally. They went into the toilets. Empty apart from a cubicle with a closed door. Knocked on it only for a somebody to tell them to wait their turn. Turns out a girl was giving out BJ's for $10 a time. Her and the guy caught both got expelled. The ones in line didn't as they had legged it plus there was no proof they had done anything. Only that they planned to. Our teacher did let us know who they were so we took the pee out of them. This has to be Birmingham. Teacher was a complete fisco and kids used to say he locked people in closets and left them there to kill them. Don't know if he killed anyone but locked two science teachers in there with the full intention to leave them there. This was the final period of the day and before winter break, and no one would have noticed two teachers being missing. Luckily by sheer chance someone wound up looking for equipment down there and let them out. Apparently one of the teachers had a slight mental breakdown, read, severe mental breakdown, and was absolutely terrified. The other teacher was just trying his best to be nice. But it went around the school that he had a major crush on her. But three years later and they're married with a baby. When I was 14, my dad committed suicide. A few years later, my mom married my now stepdad. He had two young kids who he had sole custody of. Anyways, after they got married, we moved to a different school. There was this kid in my ag class that everyone was really hateful towards. He creeped me out. One day I asked one of the other kids why everyone treated him so badly. The kid says, that's because he raped his little cousin. He went to juvie, and everyone wants to kick his butt. At the time, my mom was the teacher who worked in the alternative school in this district. 
I asked her if this was true, and if she knew him. She started crying and said it was true, and the child the kid raped was my stepbrother. He was 3 when it happened. My stepbrother is an adult now, and he's still got a lot of problems. A guy broke into his girlfriend's room one night and raped her. Even more fricked up was the fact that she told him that she wanted to be raped and how it was the most romantic thing she could think of. He waited until her parents were out one night, climbed in the window, did the deed, and revealed himself. She said that he was the best boyfriend ever and they continued to date for a while. I don't think she understands what rape means. A second one for me. The girl that was rumored to regularly get her dog to lick her out. Years later her best friend showed me a picture of it happening. I think the best friend had taken the picture but I didn't ask. A kid threw a petrol bomb at a random pupil outside the school gates one home time. Seemed too ridiculous to be true. Turned out it genuinely happened. As a teacher, my co-teacher and I just knew that our supervisor, the assistant principal, was sleeping with a fellow teacher. He was married with four kids at the time. When he left to get a different position, I had the balls to ask him if he and Lindsay were an item. Needless to say, he became seriously angry with me. Cue to six months later, and Lindsay is three months pregnant with his kid. A history teacher had an affair with another teacher. Turns out he did. Ruined his marriage and he lost his job. Only found out when I was told by a family friend that the school was having a mass for him. After his marriage and job loss he killed himself. Was one of the nicest teachers I ever had and was the reason I chose history for my HSC. A 14 year old girl sent a graphic nude to her boyfriend. That scumbag doxxed her after they broke up. I saw the picture on my friend's phone, and dang, the rumor was true. I remember seeing the cops put her in cuffs and arrest her out of the school. Her boyfriend didn't get any punishment because he deleted the original image and denied ever having seen it. Back in first grade a rumor went around that I was a lesbian because I kissed a girl in the bathroom. I did kiss said girl but I wasn't a lesbian. At least not at that point. Not exactly a rumor, but two people. I think sophomores, got caught having anal sex in one of the gyms, specifically in the loft where dudes practiced wrestling. A bunch of people were arguing that it was wrong to chastise them for having sex on school property, while the other side was arguing it was really goddamn dumb considering the freshmen used that gym for their gym class. The theater kids were a fairly, insular group, stuck to their own, fricked like rabbits, snotty little shoots. All the girls wanted this one dude and he slept with pretty much anything. All of a sudden this rumor started going around about the theater kids and that they had all sorts of STDs and stuff. A lot of us discounted it because who would think 14 18 year olds would have STDs. Except that dude. That dude had all sorts of fricked up things none of us knew about and it turned out that he really did pass around gonorrhea and herpes. He died a few years back due to complications after AIDS. The practice rooms were, in practice, more like pleasure pits. They installed larger windows instead of the small safety windows so that people passing by could more easily check on what was happening inside. Within that week a janitor busted the theater kids having a threesome in there, and that's why I joined theater. I was once invited by a band girl into one of the practice rooms so that she can show her skills playing the flute. She literally just played the flute. It was pretty good actually but really awkward because she was obviously trying to impress me because she liked me but didn't know how to move forward from there. I don't remember talking to her much after that. There was a mom of one of the students who was said to have allowed drinking and smoking weed during a party. The rumors got worse saying she played naked twister with her daughter and two teenage boys, after which she slept with her daughter's boyfriend. The rumor was painfully true. How do I know? I was there, not participating and never mentioned due to the fact that I stayed under the dining room table crying. The daughter was one of my best friends and the mother lost custody of all six of her kids. Our drama director at my middle school was an intense guy, and we all joked about how creepy he was. He made all of us girls wear tight sequined skirts or dresses as costumes to keep the artistic integrity of the musicals. Ten years later, he was arrested for molesting his 18 year old girlfriend's 11 year old little sister. None of us who had been in his plays were the least bit surprised. That our teacher watched P during class. 
He hadn't done it my class yet, then it happened. We were 9 years old. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.